in this evening's meeting. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. And the first thing is to review and approve the agenda. So looking at this agenda, I don't think we have any changes to what's online at this point. Does anyone have any information to the contrary? It, nope. it is, I, I printed it off, but I'm not sure it's the one that Cameron sent. Um, she added the most updated version has additions of uh, possible closure of Langdon Street, as well as, um, I think it was, actually, I'm not sure what the other one was. It was something up in the consent agenda. Was it, oh, <clears throat> okay. I got confused with all the additions trying to compare what was added, so thank you. Yep. Okay, um, any other thoughts on that? Okay, so without objection, we'll consider the agenda approved. Uh, next thing is uh, general business and appearances. So this is an opportunity for any member of the public to comment on any topic that is not otherwise on our agenda. And if you would keep your try to keep your comments to two minutes or less, or and I'll also try to keep them relevant. Well, I guess this could be anything. But when we get into topics, um, people can keep their comments relevant to the topic. That'd be great. Um, Cameron, do you want to unmute everybody and we can see if there's anyone who would like to make a comment? Everyone should be unmuted if you would to make a comment. Anybody like to say anything? Okay, hearing nobody, um, we will move on then. Uh, so the next item is the consent agenda. Is there a motion regarding the consent agenda? So moved. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, Donna? Well, no? just I'm really pleased about the Green Mountain Fund. I just wished it was more money that we were looking for these repairs and helping with home services. Yep. Okay. Um, any further comments? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nope, so the consent agenda carries, so um, we'll move on. So we have a, an appointment to the Homelessness Task Force, and for that we had one um, vacancy and one applicant, and I uh, that was Francis um, Kuski, and I don't see Francis here. Uh, so, with that in mind, um, is anybody, would anybody like to make a motion? I'll move to a France, uh, appoint Francis uh, Koki to the uh, Homelessness Task Force. Kuski, yes. Kuski, yes. Well, I'll second that with a proper pronunciation. <laughs> Sorry about that, Francis, if you're watching our work. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, motion to second. Edition. Edition. I'll vote What's for it. She'd be a great addition. Okay. Um, all right. So all in favor. Or any, sorry. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, aye. Thank you, Francis, for uh, your uh, dedication and time. Uh, okay. So we have an update from the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District on household hazardous waste, and I see Kathleen Ghent is here and ready to go. So I will turn it over to you, Kathleen. Thank you, Ann. Um, and thank you all for uh, inviting me to participate in your meeting tonight. As uh, I provided a memo and outlined some of the things I did want to talk about, but uh, first and foremost, CDSWMD is uh, hard at work on getting a household hazardous waste facility that would be open, will be open year round. And uh, we are still in the planning phase. Uh, having such a HHW facility 
has been an expressed need for a number of years in the district. And with Act 148, the universal recycling law and uh, state plans in place, Central Vermont has been seen as having a gap because we are a large region and we haven't had a permanent facility for HHW. Um, so the state recognized that and awarded us a $500,000 grant earlier this year. Our board of supervisors has committed $594,000 from our general reserves for the project. Um, there's still a gap of $300,000 approximately, 200 to 300,000. And we um, are looking for grant funding for that right now. So uh, we anticipate having a facility open by spring of 2022, and we still have to purchase property. So we're at the very first step of that project. We're looking at Barry Montpelier, Berlin area, because most of our population in our 19 member district reside in this area. And so we think this is the best area or best location for it. Uh, right now we hold five different seasonal collection events, including one in Montpelier in all likelihood if we get the permanent facility constructed and it's located near Montpelier, we probably will discontinue having that special event. So just do wanna let you know about that in advance. Um, I also did, did wanna mention, speaking of the seasonal events that due to COVID-19, our contractor had to put all events that they run across the state on hold. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, they announced that we could actually hold the events. So um, there had been one planned in Berry Town for April that got canceled. We've been able to reschedule that date for August 1st. And the Montpelier collection event is scheduled to take place on September 26th, barring any unforeseen uh, changes with uh, the pandemic. We expect that both those collection events to happen. So Donna, did, Donna's on our board of supervisors. Did you have anything you wanted to add? I am just so happy that the Solid Waste District is at this point where you can be promoting the construction of this facility. Um, hazardous waste, I think, as most of the counselors know, um, Small amounts are very toxic, so um, while the amount of material collected may not rival um, what goes into landfill, it certainly exceeds the um, environmental damage if it's not properly, um, properly disposed of. And this gives um, the district something that it's long wanted to have. So it's amazing that you've um, managed to take it this far, and I think we should all be looking forward to a successful outcome. Thank you. This is not our first attempt at the <laughs> facility, so, but I, I think we're in a good position for making it happen. I did want to briefly uh, talk about our response to COVID-19 office, uh, which is located on Berry Street in Montpelier, is still closed to the public. Staff, um, a small group of staff do work in the office, but most staff are working remotely. Uh, our additional recyclables collection center, which is in Berry City, which is our recycling center, reopened on May 20th, and um, we're taking some, but not all of materials. Right now, people can bring paint, batteries, bulbs, computers and TV, electronics, and food scraps for a donation. 
There's a, a much longer list of materials that we take at the ARC. We're hoping to uh, reopen or accepting those materials uh, later in June or possibly July. And when we do, there are some materials that we will no longer be able to take because either the markets no longer exist. Um, it has been a pretty volatile time in the recycling markets or because of COVID-19 related precautions. Uh, certain materials um, are, are more related to personal hygiene and we might not be able to take those at that point. We also have been doing curbside sales of compost equipment. And those in the last month have been really well received. Uh, we have a couple more dates on our website, cvswmd.org. And um, we'll probably schedule additional curbside events. Because the office isn't open, that's not uh, available for people to pick up compost equipment right in Montpelier. So people will have to travel to our, our facility in Barrie, but um, so far it's been going really, really smoothly. And uh, we've moved to online platforms for many of our workshops and school programs. And again, our website has a full list of those opportunities as well. Anything that you wanted to add, Donna? Okay. And finally, uh, really was asked to speak briefly about um, Act 148 and the ban on food scraps and landfill in particular, as I know that is a, an important topic to Montpelier officials. Um, every indication is that the, 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 the landfill ban for food scraps will go into effect as of July 1st of this year. There has been um, some testimony taken by the House Natural Resources and the Senate Natural Resources Committees. Some people are advocating that that uh, July 1st deadline be delayed. Others have been advocating that it should stay in place. And uh, in all likelihood, that is going to stay, that date of July 1st is going to stay in place. Uh, there is probably one particular COVID-19 related piece of legislation that may come to pass. And that is, um, a provision that would allow exemptions for a hauler or a facility uh, that handles solid waste or recyclables or food scraps uh, to get a temporary um, reprieve from having to collect that particular material. So it's, it's, it's very specific in nature and that um, has not yet been passed by either house. The Senate Natural Resources has discussed it. Looks like they're very interested in that going forward. As far as I know, it hasn't been discussed by the House, and um, it's really not certain that it will become law, but that's the only change to Act 148, and it's really a variance to allow uh, temporary um, ceasing of certain types of collections. Other bills that have uh, been traveling through the legislature uh, appear to still be in place. So it's, it's a time when my understanding, I'm not an expert on the legislature, but uh, is that unless something has bipartisan support especially in both chambers, it's not going to likely um, move forward. So things have to be very clearly supported and um, especially with COVID-19 and the budget, those are priorities right now. Okay, 
Um, any questions for Kathleen? Oh uh, yeah, Bill. Yeah, uh, Kathleen, thank you for this. What's the messaging for residents? I mean, we're we're getting questions. You know, I mean, July one is a little over a month away. Um, you know, do people know what they're supposed to be doing for household scraps? Uh, is there going to be a PR campaign in the next? You know, I, I think it's great that this law is going into effect, but I, I guess I'm concerned, and, and and we from the city at least would like to help you, or, or the government for that, or the state, get the word out so that people can know what, what their expectations are. The state, um, if not very soon, uh, I guess I expected that by now it might be running, but soon we will see a campaign another campaign from the state. There have been some previous in the year, and it, like we all recognize that it is a, it's confusing, especially when you see editorials and, and, and testimony. It's really hard to know if, in fact, things are going to move forward on July 1st. I, I think the state is going to be very accommodating to to try to help residents comply and understand what the requirements are. So it's it's going to probably take a longer process, especially with COVID-19, than any of us would have expected. But uh, and if, if there's something in particular you can suggest that the district or the state do, like I said, there is going to be a, a campaign uh, very soon from the state. Um, Donna. Uh, uh, Kathleen, thank you so much for all this information. I've actually heard state ads saying July 1, food scraps, all through the month of May. So I'm assuming they're on target until we hear otherwise. Should the city not put that information on our website, that unless we hear otherwise, we're expecting July 1 to be the effective date? Uh, my suggestion would be, yeah. Uh, Please, please do that. The state uh, representatives, especially in the past couple of weeks, have been more and more certain that it is going to take place. What is there an already published or prepared guideline for telling people what to do and how to do it? You know, I mean, I know, you know, we run into this with the city too. We tell people six months in advance, we give them all this information and, you know, so suddenly it's a week or two before, then all of a sudden it was like, what am I supposed to do? So how, how can we help people know what they need? How do they do it? Who, who does what? What's it going to cost them? Well, the cost might vary depending where on where you live. But um, certainly our website lists all the options people have. And I also, I'll see if there's a, 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 a link to something on the state website or, or some material that I can send to, to Bill and um, distribute from there. Yeah, I had thought that there was like a one-stop, like clear, um, frequently asked questions or like, these are the guidelines, you know, what if you have a backyard compost pile? What are the expectations there? You know, like stuff like that. Um, and I, I seem to remember that document. Um, yeah, there there, ha there has been such a document prepared and distributed some months ago, but it's now is a great time to circulate it again. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I could picture putting on our website and pointing people to when they um, inevitably, you know, they're going to be calling lots of people, but they may call us, and so we can point them there. That'd be, that'd be great. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, Donna. And then uh, Kath Kathleen, do you know if there's going to be um, a relaxed enforcement for the onset just because they're getting information out very late to the general public? I, I'm not sure it would be called relaxed enforcement. I think they're uh -huh. viewing it as a uh, educational process. Okay. Knowing that it's going to take some time. And um, so we could also be posting dates um, 
for residents to uh, to encourage residents to get their own on-site composters and digest uh, digesters. There's an in-ground digester option available for them too. Um, I don't know if they would want to go to a digester option for home use, but certainly a green cone, which uh -huh. people okay. can put in the ground and you can, you can um, place meat, dairy, fish. Uh, it's not, it doesn't have the same function as a composter, but uh, it does help with allowing people to do those in their own backyard. The one exception I don't think many people know about is that you're you're not required if you're home composting to um, deal with meat and fish any other way than you are right now. So if you're throwing those out in the trash, you can continue to, to do that. They, if you're home composting, the state recognizes that those are materials that you simply cannot put in, in your backyard successfully in your compost. Okay, thank you. Um, one last question for you. Um, is, there, um, is there a special line for residents to call just to uh, vet their composting questions or is it the general number? I don't wanna tie things up if we put out some information. You mean for the state? No, for, for Central Vermont. Oh yeah, it would just be a regular, regular number. Okay, yeah. great. And our, and our website does have a lot of information. It has, in addition to information about the compost approach, a list of all the transfer stations that accept food scraps is there. Um, and we might list the haulers as well, but, um, that's certainly something the city could could provide as well. I've seen a lot of questions and posts, responses on the Montpelier Front Porch Forum, people recommending various uh, food scrap haulers, although there aren't many. Written, okay. I know. Thank you. Uh, Lauren. Yeah, just, a, just two quick questions. Um, Thanks for all the great information. Looks like a lot of really good things happening. Um, for the household hazardous waste proposal, I was just curious, I know that there have been a number of Agency of Natural Resources grants and other things that have been put on hold or even clawed back in some cases. And just curious if you have any sense of how firm that might be or is it a wait and see? I presume we would just go, continue doing what we're doing if there was a delay in getting that money, but I was just curious how certain that seemed. Yeah, that's a really good question. And our grant agreement is in place. So um, it can't be clawed back. I know that grants that um, were still in process may be in, on hold, but our $500,000 grant is secure. That's great. Um, and I guess my only other question was just, um, it looks like the, um, the solid waste management districts in really good shape financially for this year. Are there um, concerns going into the next year for impacts from COVID and you know everything that's happening with the, the finances of most institutions right now for next year that should be on our radar? We are very aware of potential impacts from COVID-19. And so we are looking at ways that we can streamline the expense side of the budget because we can't control um, the volumes of, of materials that result in income on the, for surcharge or other fees that we receive. So we're just tight, tightening our belts, so to speak. Thanks. Does anyone else have questions? Kathleen. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kathleen. Thanks for joining us. And this is, I mean, this is great news. And thanks for all the updates. All right, well, thank you all. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll come back or uh, we'll be sure to let you know how things progress. Okay. 
Um, all right, so the next item uh, is uh, an update from uh, Montpelier Live and the Montpelier Development Corporation. Um, so this is, um, it really is just, just an, an update. Um, I don't know who would like to go first, but uh, either way is fine with me. Well, I'll jump in, um, if you don't mind, Madam Mayor. Sure. The, the council, as you know, adopted, recently adopted a strategic plan with a priority for uh, better understanding the Montpelier uh, Alive and Montpelier Development Corporation partnership. And I think um, we'll be working together to, to really iron that out and present something to you. I think tonight is really a chance to talk about what, what everyone's doing right now. We've got a big crisis on our hands and uh, how people are how people are dealing with it. So just, so they're kind of two separate tracks, I think. Unless, and obviously everything's welcome to be talked about. So with that, I'll turn it over to the, the main parties because I think both of them have a lot of exciting things going on. You're welcome to go first, Sarah. Um, I was seeing maybe starting with the recovery navigator, Dan. Um, sure. Um, yeah, so um, I think you've heard about this by now, but um, Montpelier Live partnered with the Center for Women and Enterprise, which is an SBA affiliate, to hire a um, dedicated um, individual to serve as sort of the point person for business recovery uh, questions, support, um, things like that. Uh, so um, through the Center for Women and Enterprise, we uh, hired this woman, Jean Kistner. Um, she's been uh, really well received. She's spoken to about uh, 90 businesses um, so far, um, answering questions on anything from um, unemployment to cash flow to social media to e-commerce. Um, one of the great things about the partnership with Center for Women and Enterprise is that um, in addition to leveraging a lot of federal funding, um, so we're locally only responsible for a fraction of costs of that program, um, she is able to refer people to other consultants in their network and have that covered um, as part of under the same sort of package. So um, instead of hiring one person directly, we sort of paid into this uh, program with Center for Women and Enterprise where they're able to refer people to other, other consultants in the network. Um, you uh, may have seen that the program was uh, cited as an example of best practices um, by the State Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Um, it was also uh, used as a template for the proposal by the governor to provide recovery navigators in um, every uh, community. So um, really exciting to um, be setting that um, standard for, for other communities um, in terms of what we can be pro providing in terms of hand hands-on support. Um, she will be with us for a year, um, which I think is, is really wonderful because, um, you know, what we're hearing from a lot of businesses is that um, you know, the immediate need is, is great and real, but also the ongoing, you know, what does the, the new world look like is um, something that people are dealing with um, and she'll be here to support them. Um, so that's, that's really exciting. Um, that's been partially funded by MDC and partially funded by a grant from uh, the Vermont Mutual COVID Relief Fund. Okay. Any questions for Dan? Um, I, I guess I'll just say it's really encouraging that um, Jean's already talked to 90 businesses, did you say? 87, I think. 87, almost 90. That's, that's fabulous. And hopefully that is um, proving to be valuable for folks. So that's great. Thanks. Uh, Sarah and Bill. So um, our exciting news, hopefully you've heard by now, is um, the launching of the Montpelier Economic Need and Distress Fund, MEND for short. Um, it was announced last week. And, um, you know, prior to the second round of funding from the Federal CARES Fund, there was a, quite a bit of interest and concern about how to help downtown businesses, of course, and um, especially among some of the larger businesses in the community, um, one of which I am thankful to be employed by. Um, so this fund, um, has already raised over $200,000. Um, there were five corporate sponsors that really, um, that came up with that, that total. And then there's been some 
additional individual fundraising that has followed that. And we now have dozens of applicants, uh, downtown businesses, who have, um, we've asked people to take a pledge to pledge that they are going to either reopen or continue to be open. And mon money will be doled out in the form of a grant. So not interested in having people incur further debt um, or having to get involved in complicated, um, you know, financial proof and, and document uh, disclosure and so forth. Just really wanted to um, give a real shot in the arm really quickly and help some folks through. Um, would love to have been able to have this open to every single business in Montpelier, but, you know, it's, it's a piece of the puzzle as all of us, all of you and all of we work together to try to get our community through this pandemic. And um, we're, we're very pleased and thankful for the, the corporate sponsors that have been willing to, to really pony up and, and help us through. So that's our biggest, that's really our biggest news right now. Um, I don't know if anybody has questions about that or, or wants to hear more about it. We MDC has uh, hired and paid administrator. Catherine Codius is our ad fund administrator. So we wanted to make sure that all donated funds were flowing directly through and became aid and no funds were used um, to pay for any of the administration. So also just because we are a board without an executive director, <laughs> we needed someone to handle all the communications and documentation and so forth. So. Um, so far, so good. Uh, the pledge we're asking for businesses to pledge or apply by June 5th, and then we hope to have checks out that next week. Great. Many questions. Uh, Donna. Um, I, and you I said your deadline is June 5th, so you may not be able to answer this, but did you have in mind the size of the grant or what the application so far reflect? So, um, you know, what we, we know what we've raised so far, which as I said, we had, we had 200,000 in corporate pledges and we are, we are asking for individual and, and other business donations as well. Those can be made, um, it's actually the Montpelier Foundation that's hosting the donation site, um, but you can get to it through the MDC website as well. So um, part, of the, the part of the answer to your question is it depends on how much is raised. Uh, we would love to raise $300,000 by that deadline if we can. Um, but the idea was to distribute funds according to, we wanted to just do a very sort of easy and objective criteria, so by square footage. So depending on how much we raise and then the division of square footage by those who have applied and are eligible. So uh, maybe between you or Montpelier Live, has anyone actually done a survey to say, how much do you think you need for the next six months? Uh, no. We haven't. We're, we would be sort of afraid to ask, right? I mean, we, we know anecdotally, I, you know, I would say just looking really quickly at, the, at some of the information that Catherine has compiled, because when folks took the pledge, when businesses took the pledge to stay open, they, um, they gen most of them answered, what would you use the funds for? And overwhelmingly, they said, you know, I'm two months behind in rent or, you know, something to that extent. So we know that the need is is great. It is certainly great. Yes. Right. And I'll just add that I don't think that local, state or federal programs can necessarily be anticipated to replace a full amount of revenue that someone might have expected over the next six months. I think the goal is to um, cover some of those fixed costs like rent, utilities, payroll, um, so that businesses can um, can survive as much as possible um, with obviously the hope that the economy recovers and people are able to, you know, shop and dine and 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 go about their business again. Um, so I don't think that the, the goal is to, is to really cover those fixed costs that people can't avoid. Um, and, you know, we're obviously encouraging people to slim down their expenses however they can. And um, maximize their revenues however they can as well. So I was, another, I was just wondering on the, the bulk number, it wasn't so much just what they replaced, dealing with art organizations and some of the grants I've helped the theater submit, people were asking and they got a general idea, you know, whether it was this much for three months rent or just some ballpark numbers. Is it 5,000, 10,000? Um, that's all I was looking for, but I understand you don't have that yet. Thank you. 
Sure. Yeah. And, it, and, and to be clear, we're not collecting that kind of information. We really wanted this to be a very um, quick and easy and as had, a, you know, a real objective um, process. The donors expressed little interest in, you know, a complicated give and take and so forth. So we just wanted to do a, a quick pass through. But I also just wanted to mention that, so so yes, this MEND fund is, is a piece of our community-wide effort to get us through the pandemic. The other thing that MDC has done is um, we've hired a lobbying firm to help push for uh, federal and state aid to to the downtown, to Montpelier's downtown, well, the state downtowns, really. We're trying to want to get other communities um, involved as well, but to, to try to get some more of, of the state and federal funding to to our designated downtowns and villages. If I may, um, is there a deadline for is there a deadline for donations, or can what if someone comes in after June five with money? Sure. So if there's if there's um, if we have a fantastic response either before then or if we get funding after then, um, then we would consider a second round of funding. For, for businesses who were not, um, didn't make it through the first round, weren't eligible for the first round. So yeah, absolutely, there's no, we won't turn any dollars away. <laughs> we'll make sure they get to, into the right hands, I should say. Yeah. Um, I saw Jay and uh, Jack. Yeah, just my question for, for Sarah and Bill was, was kind of following up on what Bill Frazier just asked is what, how do we leverage that $200,000 for next steps to be able to expand the pool so, so that it's not necessarily just this first floor downtown businesses and others that are so important to our local economy and curious about how you, you know, we can leverage that initial round of fundraising to increase more to expand that pool. That's all. Yeah, well, the, go ahead. I'm, I'm not sure that we, we would leverage this, but we have a, a longer, we have kind of a short term immediate uh, approach, which is this money being distributed 100% pass through. And then we're making a longer term uh, investment, trying to get a, um, an allocation of some of the governor's funds and some of the, uh, the federal funds that were allocated to the state uh, to go towards designated downtowns. And, uh, and that would be, you know, a broader coalition of uh, downtowns and, and cities uh, across the state. So I think that's really the, the long term. I think in the short term, you know, we have to just do what we can quickly so that people kind of get a little breath of fresh air and feel encouraged by the community and, and we're getting a great response on that. Part. Um, can I ask you a question about that before Jack goes? Um, so um, was that the lobbying effort that um, Sarah was referring to? Uh, that is, yes. Yeah. So um, so who did you all hire to do that lobbying? We hired uh, Downs, Rackland, and Martin. Downs, Rackland, Martin. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Jack. Thanks. Um, it relates to the... Uh, the federal, what is it, the PPP payroll protection program? Do uh, do we have any way of knowing how many uh, businesses in Montpelier were able to uh, get funds from that? And is the lobbying effort sort of tied to trying to expand that or make it easier to uh, to get funds through that program? I think the short answer is no. Uh, Dan has some information. He surveyed some folks on how many people took the PPP uh, funding, but this is not related to the PPP funding. This is related to funds beyond the PPP that were uh, given to the state, uh, federal funds given to the state and the legislature and the governor will decide and are deciding currently where those funds will be um, put into use. And as I understand it, they pretty much have total discretion the feds are not telling them how to use it and where it can go right i think there might be some there you know i think it's got to be covid related uh but yeah there's there's wide there's wide discretion um to answer your question about how many businesses receive the ppp i won't quite answer that question because i don't have the exact number but i'll say that i'm not aware of any businesses who wanted to apply who 
were not successful in applying. And there remains actually um, outstanding PPP funding available. Um, to everyone's surprise, sort of there, there is still money left. So if businesses wanted to apply, they, there is still money available. Um, you know, what, what we're hearing from businesses is um, that, it, you know, the same thing you've heard doesn't necessarily work for them. Um, the guidelines are very unclear and complicated, um, et cetera. So I'm happy to see that the, the MEND program and what the state uh, business recovery um, program uh, are much more simple um, and immediate for, for businesses. Thanks. Uh, Dan, did you have a question? Uh, I did. Um, you know, apart from rent, what are the other, and I guess this would be to Dan or to Bill or to Sarah, um, what are the sort of other needs that businesses are facing that you're finding as you go through this process? Uh, mm -hmm. Sort of the secondary or once the rent is under control, what is what are likely to be the driving factors? Morale. Yeah, yeah, I think you, I mean, right right now, you definitely have some businesses who are having difficulty having their employees come back to work because they're making more money on unemployment. Um, so that could last through July, because I at this point, I think that's when those um, supplemental unemployment benefits continue. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of businesses who are struggling to figure out a different model, um, you know, shifting more towards takeout, for instance, or trying to deal with the fact that everyone won't want to be confined into small areas. And then maybe businesses that will need to make structural as well as organizational changes to put in takeout windows or things like that. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, morale is definitely a big, a big part of it. Um, so getting, getting through it and convincing people to come back, you know, come back to shop and play and, uh, and eat. And Dan, uh, I mean, I, Dan, Dan's work with the businesses has been, I mean, this, this man has done some Herculean efforts over the last couple of months. So, a lot of cheerleading, hand holding, and supporting, um, and I've heard from many businesses that that's been very appreciated. Thank you. Um, so our our marketing efforts are a part of that. Um, the sort of getting people comfortable coming downtown again. So that's really um, always been a strength of Montpelier Live that we're leaning into. Um, so we've come up with a um, sort of a we're calling it the Montpelier Way. Uh, campaign, which is about sort of going above and beyond the safety guidelines to make people feel feel comfortable. Um, part of that was um, committing to requiring customers to wear masks, and I, I know we're going to talk about that later. But um, we've had uh, 58 businesses who have signed on to that uh, pledge already, and that's become sort of a core part of our marketing campaign. Um, and I think stands especially in opposition to some other communities who have not chosen to. Uh, pass mask ordinances, for instance, that um, when people are are looking to, um, you know, feel safe going out and shopping and dining again, um, the fact that it's a core part of our message is that the businesses are really, you know, going above and beyond to keep people safe, I think is, a, is an asset. So. That's what I was wondering if if there was any sort of cost, like, in in equipping these businesses for you know, with with the shield number of them crop up in, in retail, but I mean, if there's any sort of thought about uh, making funds available or, you know, structuring this kind of support that we would get from the state to make that segue to this sort of post-COVID retail environment. I think that's why we decided just to give the money and figure that every business is different and, you know, business owners, deserve the respect to know where they want to put their money. So you give them the money, it's based on something so that it's fair, but they're free to spend it however they wish. Yeah, now, you can have, they do that, I doubt it, but but that's what we chose to do. You can have very different um, financial burdens, you know, a, a, a business that has, you know, payroll, you know, a, a restaurant say, it'll be primarily payroll costs, whereas, a retail store will have, you know, inventory that has to be paid for within a period of time, regardless of whether revenue is coming in. So, yeah, there's a huge range in what what burdens they have and whether they have debt, you know, credit lines or or other debt that they have to pay. So, 
Um, so, I mean, just but just to be clear, I mean, we can't we can't possibly make them whole. You know, neither the MDC nor the Men Fund nor Montpelier Alive. We'd love to, but you know, it's just not that's not the world that we're living in. It's just like we're just trying to find a bunch of different pieces to help as many as we can, and they'll you know trying to come at it in different ways. Right. Um, I, I definitely hear um, you know cost of acquiring uh, sanitizer. Uh, hand sanitizer, Lysol type sanitizer, um, you know, face masks, things like that. They're definitely, you know, they're there. Um, you know, we've done some little things. We negotiated with Bar Hill to provide a wholesale rate to any downtown business for hand sanitizer. So you might see a lot of little honey bears downtown. Um, <laughs> you know, we've just, we've done a lot of little things to try and take some pressure off businesses, um, providing signage, like printing copies and providing signage um, to businesses that they need from the state. and. Um, other, you, I'm sure, seen the big two by three um, marketing signs that so people can indicate whether they're open or not, things like that. Um, you know, we're really trying to play to like what what can Montpelier Live do and what are our strengths as an organization, um, and trying to do that as best as we can. Yeah, I think Dan's done a great job networking like that. I, I also think that we we you know the the thing that was great about this effort that we just. Um, started was that we had community members we had uh you know dave kelly uh really initiated this on a call with uh bill frazier and then we had leonine uh donated pro bono the the media attention and 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 work that really got this a lot of attention and has helped this kind of move forward and and be known by others and and i do think uh, you know that the idea that morale and, and awareness and information is kind of the best cure for this uh, in the in the long term, and it's but it's an educated one. So we just have to keep getting the information out and and keeping people kind of informed and and as as funded as we can. But it's not just a money issue. I don't think. Any other uh, questions for for? This crew. Um, I, I have. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. I want one, one more thing yeah. in, which is just sure. um, that, uh, just in a, sort of in a, in a bigger picture, that um, MDC and Montpelier Alive, I think, are, you know, we're both com we com are committed to working together. We complement each other nicely. It's you know, without an executive director on the MDC, I think Dan, it's been a struggle for Dan to keep to communicate with us and get responses from us and so forth. And, you know, acknowledging that we have now at least appointed a liaison from our board to be the Montpelier Alive, the Montpelier Alive connection. So, um, you know, we're stumbling a little bit as we figure out our new model without an executive director, but, um, you know, like I said, are committed, are committed to working cooperatively. And I think that this liaison um, position will help quite a bit with that. So is that liaison Catherine Codius? Is that no, no? It's uh, it's Harry Kahn, um, Harrison Kahn. Oh, He's one oh, of the board okay. members. Yeah, gotcha. Um, well, so I had a, a question, sort of related to the that the plan with um, you know knowing that you all don't have an executive director at the moment. Um, uh, we had talked about at one point in the past uh, project managers for things, and um, just curious if there's any update on um, if there's any project managers uh, yeah, for projects moving forward, um, or just anything, you know, any update on that? I would call Catherine Codius a project manager mm -hmm. for this project. Absolutely. You know, this is this allows us to be nimble and, and create a position where someone is fully dedicated to an immediate need or a project. So this is our model. This is how we did it. You know, it was, I think it was effective and efficient uh, without having someone kind of there on staff all the time. She's now addressing this as this project fades down. You know, we'll we'll have other project managers. We can have concurrent project managers. We're going to talk about one for, uh, you know, other projects with the city that are coming up, and um, and that's the that's our that's our ability with this model to actually get someone who can focus on it, and and we can have much more. Um, adeptness in and specialize in those areas as opposed to trying to have a jack of all trades who's who's there all the time. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, any other questions? Okay.
Well, thanks well, to thanks to you all for your leadership through this very trying time. And I have to say, as a mother of high schooler, I appreciate especially the mayor's efforts. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, and uh, thank you for, for your work. I know that you've all have been very, uh, very busy with this as well. And uh, I'm sure, I know, I don't know if uh, Sarah and Bill, you're sticking around for the next conversation, but I know Dan is. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how the city can otherwise help uh, with the uh, relief efforts here in, in the way that we can. Um, so thank you again. Thank you. Thank you um, all. And real yes. quick, um, yes. I do believe that, well, I, someone raised their hand in the oh. chat. Um, oh, I'm not good. sure if they have a comment. Um, Leeds, Brewer, you have your hand up? Yes, I do. You? Thank you, yes. Um, I'm curious about whether or not there's any listing of what disqualifies a business from this. this uh, I, I hear that there's lots of qualifications, not lots of qualifications, there are qualifications, but not all businesses are, are going to have the availability of this man. And I'm wondering what disqualifies them. Yeah, no one's disqualified. It's it's for stores. We, we decided on, uh, you know, to have big impact and the donor intention was that we have storefronts uh, kind of vibrant and alive uh, on, on Main and State in our designated downtown as we reopen. So that's the group that's targeted by this, by this effort. I think all you have to do to not be disqualified is to say that you, uh, as one of those people, uh, as one of those businesses, you uh, just need to say that you plan on being open and, uh, and continue being a contributing member of uh, downtown. Great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And thank you, Cameron, for the reminder to check with the public. Any other uh, questions from anybody? Okay. All right, uh, well, thank you again. All right, so um, moving on to uh, the coronavirus updates. Uh, we have some updates specifically from the city. I assume we should start with that. Uh, Cameron or Bill want to take that? Uh, Bill, you're on mute. I think he just told me to go ahead. So I'll OK, very good. <laughs> um, so I'll review the memo that I sent out today. Um, Hopefully you all had some time to look at it. But in general, I uh, went through the state updates and what has happened since our last council meeting. Um, on May 15th, Governor Scott issued addendum 14 to his executive order that extended the state of emergency for Vermont and all his previous addenda through June 15th. So this did loosen some restrictions on where we can travel and included in-state stays at available campgrounds, lodging, and marinas. Um, uh, they also extended some lodging for housing vulnerable populations, such as emergency shelters, like we have at the Econolodge, um, and allowing hotels to have accommodations for healthcare workers. On May 18th, the Vermont Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation um, did say that they will be opening and operating state parks this summer but there will not be any camping through at least June 25th. May 20th, uh, Governor Scott has proposed a $400 million economic relief and recovery package that has yet to be approved. On May 22nd, the governor issued addendum 15 to his executive order, which had additional guidance for outdoor restaurants, bars, and other establishments. Um, this did put out some guidelines for opening restaurants for outdoor dining um, that can be found in the addendum and also an a ACCD memo. Um, there's also guidance that was released to allow barbershops and salons to start opening May 29th, so in just a few days. Um, there's also been additional openings in health services and churches and other formal places of worship have been allowed to open to 25% capacity starting on the 23rd of this month. In this amendment, the state has also canceled any traditional fairs or festivals. 
And then today, Governor Scott held a press conference um, that said, you know, our data trends have been positive, but we do need to keep in mind that there has been a drastic increase in numbers of positive cases in almost all the states that surround us. So that information needs to be taken into account as he's looking at his restart strategy. And he will probably be announcing this week uh, an increase to the number of folks allowed at gatherings. So that's it for the state updates. Going into our updates, um, later tonight we'll be presenting, I think I'll be doing that at some point um, on this agenda item, our phase one reopening plan for approval by y'all. Um, and as much as this makes me sad to announce, the city pool will be closed for the 2020 summer season. Um, we will be using this time to work on any updates and repairs to the pool as financially feasible to the pool and the pool house. Um, I want to call out that this decision was not made lightly and we tried to wait as long as possible to make this decision because I know it's a huge service and impact to our community. Um, but it really does come down to the financial strain of opening, the fact that most of our staff is furloughed. Um, many organizations, and by many, I think everyone that we've used um, to train lifeguards are currently closed, remain closed, so we don't have enough lifeguards. And we do worry about maintaining the health and safety of our residents in such a congregate um, facility. Our, however, our summer camp program will be moving forward for summer 2020. It will look a little different. Um, we're working right now on creating our operations plans to fit into the um, state regulations, and we'll be sharing that information as soon as we solidify our plans. Um, you heard some updates about our regional aid groups sort of in general um, around the area. We still do have meal sites for those who need meals at all the churches uh, Monday through Friday. Those locations um, can be found on the website MontpelierMutualAid.org. I do want to give you some updates on our communications. We've been really upping our social media use. And um, most recently, we've been averaging um, about 988 interactions on each of our posts, which is a huge upswing for us. And our most recent post on the pool closing has reached over 3,000 people, which is one of our biggest posts of the last year. So um, that is exciting for us. And I also want to share something I was just made aware of. Um, there is a donation drive um, this weekend for our, um, to support our homeless population in the Montpelier Berry area. There's a group that call themselves the Street Medics. They're working with a few of our local um, advocacy groups. And they will be hosting a donation drive this Saturday from 9 to 12 on the State House lawn looking for um, donations of camping and outdoor gear like tents and sleeping bags, um, personal care items, um, any hygiene related products, um, and bug spray and things like that. So if you're interested, there is that. And that is my memo if anyone has any questions. Um, Cameron, I had a quick question. You um, all, so along with the pool being closed, I saw that uh, playgrounds are closed. And uh, I yes. just want to clarify which playgrounds we mean. Any, Any city, city owned, owned playground, playground, and I do believe that the school has still, um, uh, we maintain, maintain those for them, them um, and the schools are closed. So, um, so, so there's a school playground, playground that, that we maintain, maintain are currently closed. closed. Okay. Um, Closed, we're just not, not maintaining them in any way. Okay. So, so people, people could potentially still use them, but, but sort of at their own risk, risk or is that I do not advocate, advocate that, that for that at all. No. Okay. 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 Just, just wanted to share. And then, <laughs> then the other one that I, I think um, we could use some clarity around is the playground, playground behind um, oh, senior, senior center. center? Yeah. yeah. I, if, if I understand, understand correctly, and I am willing to be fact checked, but obviously, um, I don't think we own that. I think we use that um, for like, like in an agreement. Um, so, so I will check, check in on that, that and okay. I will get clarity on that. Okay. Um, that would be great. And it, it, it might, might be useful to, um, when, when we say playgrounds, playgrounds are closed, maybe even name them. them. Uh, I, don't I don't think, think there's, there's too many, many of them. So. 
Um, is that it? Thank okay, you. Okay, cool. cool. Thanks. Thanks. Any, Any other questions, questions about um, this, this portion? portion? Uh, I have a question about the playgrounds. Since, Since I violated using them this past weekend, um, I mean, the, the playgrounds, playgrounds when school's not open, we use at will at our own risk. As, as long, long as we're keeping, keeping social distance, is there a reason why they're totally closed? None of those, um, uh, so um, none of them can be sanitized. None of the structures that you're touching can be sanitized. And um, what, what it also means when things are closed, we're not maintaining the fields. So not pushing back the, the, the soft rounds to be under the swings, that kind of thing. So um, it's just, we want to make sure that people know that we're not uh, liable if they do decide to use it at their own risk. So, so if, if I, I go, go back, back will I get, get arrested? arrested? No. <laughs> okay. I understand city reducing their risk, but it seems very odd that we're allowing adults to have all this walking space and not letting kids keep their space on the playground. So, well, my, my, my one argument for that is that, you know, the virus does live from all the that we've seen. The virus lives on surfaces and children who, especially when ones under two, are not advocating for wearing masks to touch their face, to touch themselves, to touch the equipment, and we're not cleaning it. No one is there to clean that equipment. So right. I understand for toddlers. Totally get it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. okay. Any, Any other questions, questions about that? And from, from the public. public. Uh, yeah, or Dan, Dan yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just say, say I'm, 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 I understand why the pool is closed, but that, I, I guess I have to express a great deal of disappointment that that, that can't, can't be open. Um, I think that is a really incredibly important part of our city resources in the summer and widely used, but, but I, can, I can understand what a difficult decision, but one decision for safety's sake. But just, just a, a great, great deal of disappointment, disappointment uh, on, on a personal, personal level. Uh, Lauren, Lauren, then Connor. Connor. Uh, just, just on that note, there was a kind of nice update on Wrightsville Reservoir and how they are working to open that. So people looking to swim, not going too much further up Elm Street. Um, and it is sad to have the pool this year, but, um, but that will be open. And it sounds like they're putting a number of um, you know, you know precautions, precautions in place uh, and maybe, maybe limiting people, people and they're encouraging people right now to go on and buy season passes so you don't, you don't have to even interact with someone with exchanging money or anything. Um, so that, that, that will be a swimming option, option though. though. We're all sad, sad to not have the, the, the pool this summer. Um, Connor. I was going to ask about the status of Wrightsville Beach, Beach, but Councillor Hurl is Nostradamus. <laughs> Uh, okay. okay. Any, any other any, any other questions from, from the public, public on that? And you can unmute yourself. You have the ability to do that if you're a member of the public and would like to say something. And then just so you know, Cameron, I, I can't necessarily see the blue hands, um, so I'll rely on you to watch them out. Okay. Super. Super. Um, all, right, all right, let's move on to the um, next portion, which is um, the mask mandate. Um, so uh, either Cameron or Bill, do you want to um, frame this up, or, or Dan? Sure, I'll hop in. I think Dan will probably want to participate as well. Um, you know, obviously, we were told by the governor that, that the state, at least currently, wasn't going to do a statewide mandate, but was going to leave it up to the local governments. Um, Montpelier Alive began their effort with their Montpelier Way pledge, and as you heard Dan say, 58 businesses signed on. Um, they requested basically some backup. They said, you know, it would really be easier for us. It would help us in situations if we were citywide. First of all, just, you know, the same playing field for everybody. Second of all, someone challenges us, we, you know, we have a city regulation to fall back on. Um, we certainly think it's in, in uh, safety, you know, it's a good practice. Staff felt okay with that. Uh, what we're really looking for tonight is simply a discussion from the council whether you, you think it's a good idea that the city do it or not. You won't be enacting that tonight. We then put 
the actual, actual order together, together based, based on, on what, what you want to do. Um, and uh, so, so, so that's, that's basically, basically it. Uh, our, our suggestions are, are that it be for indoor, indoor businesses only, not all public places, so sidewalks, sidewalks, bike paths, and things, things like that. that. Um, obviously, this is something you all might, might want to discuss. discuss. Uh, and then it would be for all businesses in the city, city not just downtown, but any functioning business in, in the city, city uh, indoors. indoors. And, uh, and we, we just know that, um, the ownership says this publicly, and we don't really, police department doesn't really have the resources to be actively patrolling this, going into stores and, you know, asking people to put masks on, but they, they certainly can respond if there's a, a altercation or a, argument or something like that amongst the customer and the store owner or employee of a wearing mask, they can, they can reply to the situation. So that, I think, is really my idea. Did anyone want to jump in? I was just going to say, I think you covered that pretty well. This is something that um, businesses were encouraging. Um, I'm aware of three other communities in Vermont, but there may be more, um, who have passed an ordinance already, um, in Burlington, South Burlington, and Brattleboro. Um, I think um, Brattleboro is kind of the example that um, we're maybe most closely looking at, because that um, is specific to um, while you're in commercial establishments versus any sort of public places. Um, and... Um, the only, the only other thing I'll add is that, um, you know, there would obviously need to be some exception for, like, if you're sitting down at a table in a restaurant eating, eating you can't be wearing your, can't be wearing your mask while you're eating your food. Um, so, you know, or, or there may be other, there may be other things that come up where, you know, they say that at hair salons, you're allowed to take your mask off so that they can trim your beard. Not, you know, I'm, I'm making this up. But, um, you know, there may be appropriate um, examples of where there need to be exceptions in it. So. Right. right, as I so said, we, we haven't drafted this yet, but our thinking would be if the, the exceptions would be if there were specific guidance for, for specific business, like, like restaurants or restaurants or whatever they might be, uh, then those would apply, but otherwise this would be the, the blanket sort of fall back on. You know, I, I wondered if it made sense to frame it as just retail uh, businesses for now, but uh, I'm sure there are some services that maybe it makes sense to still have them wear masks. What do you think about the idea of just keeping it at retail for now and then waiting for more guidance for um, service providers and then including, you know, restaurants? I don't know if Dan has an opinion on that. I'm just trying to pull up um, the survey response responses, uh, the pledge uh, responses to see. Um, there were actually a fair number of non-retail uh, businesses who have taken it, okay. um, including realtors, uh, I see Dan, Dan Richardson on here, law firms, um, uh, tattoo parlors, salons, um, so I went in restaurants, restaurant, actually. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I would I would, would encourage it to be um, any any commercial establishment. But I would I would understand that. You know, I certainly understand that. Okay. Um, my, yeah, yeah, my my, my sense, sense of that would be you know, this, this is a public, public health, health thing. thing. If, if we, we think, think we either think masks are good preventive measures or we don't. If we, if we think, think they are, then they, they ought to be everywhere unless the state or the health department exempts rather than us deciding who's safe in what place. Okay, uh, Jay, and then Donna, and then Connor, and then Lauren. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah no, hopefully we're, we're not too redundant, redundant but um, I, I, I think, think that, that the Brattleboro um, mm -hmm. uh, piece that, that, that you, you know, know, got, got sent, sent out earlier was a really good um, starting point for us um, in terms, terms of around indoor commerce, and people, you know, know, where, where, where there, there would, could, could be multiple people inside, not necessarily distinguishing you know, what type of business is happening. Um, I've, I've talked, I actually, uh, over these last few days, have talked to a few folks um, like out on River Road and Route 2, um, outside the downtown, just like, hey, you guys don't require a mask, but what do you think? And the overall, like, everybody I talked to said, we, 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 
they, they just, just want a level playing field. field. They, they would love, love it if we just said, said yes, yes, you need. They, they don't, don't want to have to decide, decide themselves because it puts, puts them, them in an awkward, awkward position. But, but if their, their belief was that, that if they were, if, if the city said this is what you need to do, then they would be more than happy. They would, they would welcome that. Maybe that, I'm, I'm sure, sure that's, that's not everyone, everyone but, but I think that that, um, I think that that, that, that would, would cover a lot of, uh, of businesses, you know, outside, outside of even just downtown. downtown. And, and I think, think that, that it just makes it, um, makes it, uh, fair for, for everyone. So like, like I said, I love, there's a level playing field. And I'll also throw this in here and we, we can talk about this as sort of the next, as like a next step. But I think one thing that's, um, relevant to, to point out, out is I think, I think that there's an opportunity for us as a city to support the, the process and support businesses. And then I look at you know, a town like Stowe that partnered with their fire department and hired a local tailor and manufactured 2,400 masks and sent them to every year-round resident in the town. I'm not saying we need to do that, but I do think that what, what, what could happen is if we could look um, consider ourselves a resource to try to manufacture um, some masks that could be available in commercial spaces that are running into conflict so that it could just be very easy, just like the co-op did, like, hey, if you don't have one, here it is, you don't have to worry about it, here it is, and you head it off before there's an issue, um, I think that we could think about looking at some sort of resources to make the transition of a mandate more manageable for business owners all across the city. Uh, Don. Okay. I'm, I also, uh, Jay, like that part of the Brattleboro that you quoted, because it says all establishments that invite the public in, and then it's very broad. It, it does, I'm not, I'm not sure if it includes taxis and transit, so, so you, you might, might need some, some language there. The, the, the other, other thing, it talks about making sure that it's hosted, signage, as, as well as masks available. I think, I think those are both good ideas. And the, the Hawaii uh, executive order that I believe Cameron sent us talks about how if people are engaged in permittable outdoor exercises, they don't have to wear a mask as long as they're social distancing. Uh, I think that's also good. And I, and I think, think we need to talk about the age requirement because all of these are different. Uh, Brattleboro has children under the age of five. Um, some of them go as high as under nine. So I think we have to look at that and make a decision. That's all. Good, good point. Um, Tom Hunter. I think, uh, First, First of all, I think it's probably a no-brainer to do this. The award workers issue as much as anything. And I, I would have a broad, it's, if you're a receptionist of a law firm, you know, um, you could just have the same protection as you know, somebody in retail or a restaurant. And then if the business isn't going to do it, it's up to the government to intervene. And I would express like some frustration. I think the state's done a pretty good job handling this pandemic so far. Um, but it's really just passing up the, the block to push the system in you know, municipalities. You know, we're on the same pool here. Um, so I, I don't think that's a very good way to go about it. So, yeah. If, if, if we have to be the bad guys on this, we'll be the bad guys. Um, but I, I think the state has some responsibility for the measures in place. They think this is a public safety issue. They should have gone ahead and done it. So um, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, um, I think a lot of businesses, and I appreciate Dan coming in uh, with the businesses being proactive on this. Um, I think it's ready to move. <laughs> Uh, Dan. Dan. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Lauren. Lauren. Lauren was first, and then Dan. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I would just echo and don't need to be too redundant. redundant. And I, I think it seems incredibly unfair to put the burden on every business to come up with their own rules and regulations and then have to enforce it without any force of law. So very much support the city doing this. Um, I think the, the Brattleboro one did look like a good model to me, um, you know, and, and looking through some of the specific questions that a couple of others have raised, um, I think indoor makes sense. I think as broad as possible makes sense to me as well. Um, you know, having a five-year-old, he can wear a mask fine, so I don't think we need to go as high as nine. I think we could go, I've seen a lot of kids um, wearing them fine, so, you know, maybe it is about five-ish, but, um, 
but, but certainly, certainly, you know, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of kids, kids in the, the realm that I'm in um, being, being able to wear them, them especially for this kind of um, situation where you're just wearing it inside a establishment, establishment like that. that. Um, and, you know, just one other angle that hasn't come, come up, you know, I've got, got a, a friend, friend in town who's, who's in the high risk, risk category, and she, and she was talking about how unless, unless something like this is in place, she feels entirely uncomfortable going into any store. So I think it's, it's you know, unfair, unfair to the workers that they who are seeing most people are exposed, but it also makes our residents feel unsafe if they don't know what they're going to encounter when they get into a store, or they might go in and everyone has a mask on, but other people are coming in. So I think just that peace of mind and, you know, across the board, protecting public health, um, just definitely strongly support this. Thanks. Uh, Dan. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll echo the other, other uh, counselors' thoughts. That this is, is I, I, I like the idea, idea that it would be broadly both commercial or business, however we choose to define it, um, whether they be retail, restaurant, service, or other. Um, the, the one question I do have is about enforcement. Um, and and how, how we see this being enforced. And, and you know, you know one, one thing I think that the state has done is set, set a good tone for voluntary enforcement, and, um, which, which I would see us doing as well. well but um, I'm, I'm just wondering, and, and maybe Bill, you have an answer to this as to how how we can send out a signal that this is something that while it's pertinent and it does carry certain force of law, um, that this is really something that we're intending voluntary compliance on. And this is really to make everyone's life easier, not uh, create difficult, difficult boundaries for people. Um, and maybe Dan, if there's a way in which, you know, these businesses take the pledge, then as, as a result of this, you know, would effectively be able to deny people access because of this ordinance as, as a way of enforcing this. Yeah, I can, you know, that was my sense of this was that we would be, you know, I think that's why I mentioned that we don't have the police capacity to actively go out and demand that people put masks on. Um, we, you know, I, I like Donna's idea about signage and maybe we can work with my mother to get, get signs you know, on stores, masks are required by city ordinance, uh, you know, and um, I, I think we want to follow the same tone the state has taken and I think highly successfully, honestly. Um, um, Jack. Uh, thanks. thanks. So I was, I'm following up on Dan's, Dan's observation. I'm, Thinking some of the same thing. I wasn't haven't seen the ordinance adopt ordinances adopted by Burlington and South Burlington from the news coverage. It, it appears as though they were talking about have they're having passed resolutions rather than ordinances. And um, I don't know if that really is the case. I'm a bit concerned about passing an ordinance when we're saying right now that the city is not going to use its power as a government body to enforce the uh, the ordinance, and that would that's how I would feel about any ordinance that uh, that we're considering passing. And so I would encourage us to think about that as we decide whether to call this an ordinance or to call it uh, a resolution or something, something else, else it's, it's clear that any store or any whatever we do uh any store or any business has the legal authority to uh to put up a sign saying you're not allowed to enter if you're not wearing a, a mask and they can refuse entry to anyone who's, uh, who's not wearing a mask um and so, so I, I just want to go, go into, into this advisedly. So uh, I want to uh, highlight that question. So Bill, what is uh, your thinking around, um, this is a sort of a broader question. I mean, this maybe has a more specific um, uh, aspect to it because it's not something that we're really anticipating enforcing. Um, but what is the... Um, the, the thinking, thinking around temporary ordinances or um, emergency measures, that kind of thing. 
So, so a like, couple, couple things. things. First, First of all, of all noise, tonight, tonight really, really is going to be a sense of do you want us to go ahead and have, have some either for an emergency, you know, especially meeting next, next week or two weeks, weeks from now. So um, I, think I think part of, of the, 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 the follow-up we, we would do is figure out what the, the best, best way to recommend, recommend it. What, what I, I, I believe that all of the three orders in the state so far, I mean, the resolutions or emergency orders, they have some sort of ordinances. Um, we're preliminarily thinking the best way to do this is a help order. Um, you know, it's a health, health crisis. crisis. You can issue a health order. It doesn't require the same amount of time as an ordinance, and it can be you know, withdrawn when the health issue is so we You are the Board of Health, so the Board of Health, health masks are required. With, with regard to enforcement, and I want to be clear, we're not, not you know, we, we have, have lots of ordinances that we don't necessarily actively, proactively seek to um, or, or for that matter, state statutes. But when appropriate, we will cite them. And when appropriate, we will force them. All I'm trying to say is I don't think we're going to have the police part walking around downtown every day, going into stores or you know, walking people about to walk into the store and say, you know, where the mask police. But we are saying that if, if a store owner has a problem and someone's giving them a hard time, we will respond. And if there's a regulation, we'll enforce it. We're not saying. You know, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. anything. I think there's a difference between going out and looking to create conflicts over this versus, versus but it, it would definitely be a tool. I don't want to leave. You know. Okay, that's, that is helpful. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah go ahead. And, and then Connor? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I support that, that, that method. method. I, you know, I was thinking that the public health direction was probably the way to go. I would be, um, a little, a little bit, bit reluctant to make it in a resolution, resolution just simply because I think, I think a resolution doesn't necessarily carry the force of law that at the end of the day, we may want this to have. And frankly, the businesses may want this to have and the residency of this requirement. Um, I agree that there has to be a soft touch in its application and you know, you know, really, really an emphasis, emphasis on voluntary, voluntary compliance, but, but you, know, you know, Connor's point about safety of workers, that, that all depends upon this being um, an, an enforceable uh, action as opposed to a more um, uh, practicatory or, or, you know, aspirational um, type, type, type language. language. So I think, I think we, we, have have to be, we have to be, have to be careful. careful. And, and I like the health order because the health order also has a lot, lot more flexibility for enforcement um, if, if there, there are issues that arise because, because it's really talking about a public health issue as opposed to just making, making an ordinance and a rule um, that, 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 you know, is just one, one of general applicability that goes through the civil enforcement process. So I'm, I'm, I think Bill has, has the right idea and I would support that. Um, Connor. Yep. Yep. Uh, and Echo Dan, I, I think it does have, have some weight um, with the health order, just having the police department, police department call up a business, you know, I think they're, I think they're going to cut it out now if they're in violation of it. But I, I, I have some questions about the uh, timeline on this. Are, are we looking for something we could pass tonight that would come into effect immediately? I'm just thinking like, you know, two weeks, if there's any two weeks to do this, the next two weeks is a lot more important than the two weeks after that, right? Agreed. So, so like, because, because we, we want, want to have this conversation about what you wanted, um, what I'm looking for is two, two things. Really. One, do you, do you want, want to do this? And it sounds based on everyone's comments, comments that everyone thinks, thinks it's a good idea, idea to have an ask So we'll, we'll prepare, prepare one. Uh, I think the other thing, thing would be we could either do it at the next level or it could take a, you know, happen pretty, pretty quickly. quickly. Um, or we, we could call, call a special meeting for next Wednesday, just, just to deal with these two or three items for downtown uh, to, to move them more quickly. I would say, say too, um, that I think I, think I shared this with Mayor, I can't really share with the else. You know, our, our, tradition, our tradition for passing ordinances is that um, we have, have a first and second reading, but that, that is by tradition. Our, our, Charter only requires an action by the council. It doesn't require the multiple meetings. So, you know, again, if we're, if we're considering any of these as emergency actions, I think we could pass them 
at the, the next meeting. meeting. And they, you know, technically, technically, they go into effect in 15 days, days but we can start to start. start. You know, if, for the, the things, things like if we decide to do parking, park, let's just shoot all that stuff, you know, we can start that immediately. So, so yeah, I, I, I would view but a health owner can take the answer immediately. immediately. Oh, okay, so, so I, I mean, I, I would, would well, it's immediately after it's, after it's um, approved, right? right? So, so I, I mean, I would anticipate potentially Wednesday, next Wednesday at the latest. I mean, because, because we, can we can always call a special meeting, meeting whenever it's ready. ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, can also, I can, I can also, also take a look, look and I, I, I'd, I'd have, have to... to Talk to a wiser person than me, and there might be someone on the council, but whether or not the, the, the health officer can issue, could issue a preliminary health order and then have the Board of Health approve it, so it, could, it might be fast. Um, but I want to make sure we, we did that correctly. Sure. Um, so, do you, uh, for the purposes of, of the math mandate, would it be useful to you to have a Motion, motion or do you feel like you have enough? enough? Well, actually, it would be great to have a motion, motion certainly that you'd like, like to have, um, you know, a city requirement, requirement that there be masks. And then if, if you want, want to put, put, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put, put in the motion things about like, like signs and providing masks, masks but I think all good ideas, ideas that we should follow up on. Um, or at least maybe with a separate motion. Um, if you want to add things about age limits or those kinds of things, you want, you want to do that, that now, now, or you want, want to think, think it over and add that, that to whatever regulation goes in next week, or whenever we do it, and that's fine too. too. Well, I was hearing a lot of support for what Brattleboro did, so maybe that's a place to start, and and then we can potentially. Um, sometimes it's easier to to respond uh, to something, so um, unless others. Ha want to hash, hash that out right now, I think, think it probably, probably makes sense to have a starting point, point and then when when uh, when we're ready, people will have a discussion just about, well, well maybe, maybe a special, special meeting, meeting just about this. Right. Um, Jack. On timing, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm certainly available to do a special meeting uh, next Wednesday if people feel they want to do do it that quickly, and I, I think that's fine. I would be reluctant to try to do anything any faster than that, partly because it takes time to put something together and think about it, and partly because I think we want to make sure, not only with this, but with some of the other things we're discussing, we want to be sure that uh, the members of the public have ample notice to uh, of what, what we're considering doing and the opportunity to come in and express their opinions because I think it's very possible if not likely that with this and some of the other proposals, people may not uh, all agree. And I want to make sure that people have the opportunity to express whatever their support or disagreement is. Fair enough. Connor. Is, is it appropriate, appropriate for a motion, motion to call a special, special meeting for Wednesday? Wednesday then? I think, think that, that would be great. great. Okay. okay. I'll, uh, I'll make that motion to have a meeting a week from today. And at 6.30, are we thinking? Or would you like to do it earlier? 6.30 is great. Okay, 6.30 to consider this issue. Second. And would you do that, that motion? Is that, do, you do you want to call, call do the... Yeah, I'll, I'll amend that motion. It's okay to include uh, the direct city staff to draft up language um, to, uh, for, for health. Was it a health? Uh, uh, just re language to require masks. And, you know, I think that would be fine. No, 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 no. And you agree, Jack? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, any further discussion on this? Okay, all in favor say, oh, I'm sorry. Yep, okay. I I'd understand that as directing Bill as well to, you know, bring any city staff such as health officer into the process um, of, of, of drafting and reviewing and, and, and possibly attending the meeting. Um, and I understand the idea is that because this is such a major thing, 
rather, rather than, than going, going through, say, a public health, health officer, we want to have it as a council, as a public health, health board uh, for, for the city that, 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 that we would, would, it would originate with us as opposed to assigning it to a, a public, public health officer to issue in the interim. Is that, Is that right? All good, good then. <laughs> okay. okay. And, and Jack, you're okay with that? Yes. yes. Does, Does that mean, mean that the, the, note, the warning of the meeting has to be a warning of the Montpelier Board of Health? Health? In, in addition, addition to the city, city council. council? I think, I think it, it would be. be. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good, Good clarifications. clarifications. Um, um, any, any further comments? comments? Uh, actually, actually, any, uh, before, before going going further, any, further, any uh, comments, comments from, from the public? public? Cameron, Cameron, do you have any hands raised? raised? And people, people can unmute themselves. themselves. They, they have anything they want to add? add? Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say um, uh, I did get a letter um, from a citizen and I, or a resident rather, and I don't know if you want me to read it. At this one, uh, she supported um, a mandate for wearing masks indoors, so I don't know if you want me to read it today or if you'd rather me read it next week. Well, we put it in the records the next week in the meeting material. Can do. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Great. Any, Any further, further conversation? conversation? Okay, all in favor, favor please say aye. 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 Okay, great. Um, all right, so the next uh, uh, thing on the agenda online is the city reopening plan, but I'm wondering if we can shuffle that a bit. Uh, and um, I assume the emergency business order ordinance is for 2020 it is about Parkless. Yep. Um, we, we could, could do, do either, either that next or possible, possible Langdon Street closure. Um, and then I think we should probably, probably let's take up the parklet. Yeah, let's take up the parklet and then do Langdon Street. There's someone connected in the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so again, this is, we're, we're, we're looking for a direction from the council, not, you know, to approve an ordinance tonight or a regulation. As, As you know, we have a very prescribed parking ordinance, you can only use six spaces, there's a process, there's dates to apply. And essentially we're, we'd be suggesting that we suspend that for uh, the foreseeable future, but certainly no later than October 25th. And we pick that date because that's the end date for parking in the current ordinance. So it would be up to the length of this season. Um, so, so we would suspend the, the, the limit, limit on the number of parking spaces, some of the requirements of the construction. Obviously, they still have to be ACCD guidelines. So, um, you know, and, and basically, what, if this is something that the council wants to do, again, we would come back next week with proper mechanism for doing this. And, and rather than have, you know, right now, part of this, the permanent, so-called permanent parks have to come to the council to approve the location. Our suggestion is that Typically authorized the manager or staff to just approve these, so you wouldn't have to keep hearing, you know, having all these applications at council meetings. We would just set up the rules, put them in. And my idea is that, that we've talked about, and I think we'd like to talk with the business community more, is that these would really be for in the proximity area of businesses in front of them, so, so people could expand their seating capacity or their retail capacity. Uh, out, out into, into the parking lot, lot the parking space. space. The, the reason it's connected to the land industry is the land industry is so narrow that to, to, to do that and have traffic, you know, think, you know, might, might not be safe. safe. So it might be better to just close the whole street and, and then have these kind of things. So that's, they're, they're connected, but they're not exactly the same thing. Um, nobody, nobody has to do this. this. Uh, you know, it's, it's completely, completely voluntary for businesses. We, we cannot create a public plaza, we can't create sort of a, an attraction. So, so let's have music, let's have a fair, let's have all these things that bring people downtown and by the way, these businesses around. These have to be independent to businesses, places where someone is going to, to look at merchandise, to sit, to enjoy food or beverage. Um, and, and, and the public, public space, space specifically, like, like Langley, would, would simply be a walkthrough uh, on City Street. It would be sidewalks with the public, public spaces, the walking, but, but the parking, parking spaces, spaces can be extensions of the business. Uh, again, the state has, has issued guidelines for these. Uh, you can't just put up you know, cones and go to town. 
We have, we have to, to deal, deal with curbing, balancing, and those kind of things. We're trying to work our, our, our way through those, but we would like to certainly try this in the summer to give more people the opportunity to have more retail space, basically, or more restaurant space, um, and, and do that. And, and so, so, as I said, related to that, would be the same scenario on Langdon, which would be for the businesses on Langdon, um, although you know, possibly we, there might be some that might go around the corner or whatever, you know, we could talk about that. Uh, but, but the idea, idea is to really help, help people uh, in, in these spaces. And the, the only reason we would think about, about closing that is just because it's much narrower than the state in Maine to have people out of the, it creates a walkway through the center with the merchant basically on the side. Um, we, we haven't got all the details fleshed out of this. I think Dan has had done a great job communicating with the business community. We, we want, want to hear more from the business community, but this, this is for them. them. This isn't, you know, something the city is doing for the city, so we, we want, want to make sure it meets the needs of the business community. But our thought would we come back either at the special meeting next week, uh, if we have it all together, or the following meeting to put together, again, an emergency order that basically says, okay, Article 20 is suspended till October, the one, the one caveat we want to put in here, um, and, and, and I think we need to talk this through with the businesses, it's kind of a catch-22, right? If, if it gets really successful and people are coming downtown, we could then have a shortage of parking. So we want to have some opportunity to have that conversation about do we then suspend this or do we just deal with parking that we have left? Um, so we want to have the ability for the council at a Warn public, public meeting to say, okay, we're going to stop this in 15 days or you know, next month or something, if, if there were a, a reason to do that. Uh, but right, right now, it's predicated on the thought that most of the parking spaces are empty. Uh, this is a chance. You know, we do have, we have an empty lots, so people use the lots. And, uh, and I think it's a chance to try things. ideas that have been talked about for years, and this might be the, this is the time, time to give them to see how they, they, they work in the sort of limited controlled environment. I'm not done my speech. Um, I have a question for Dan. Do you um, have an indication that people, that businesses downtown would be interested in parklets? Yeah. Um, I don't um, have, have a good sense of exactly who would end up taking a stop on it. I think, I think it, some, some of it might depend on what, what the requirements are and how much of an investment it might take. Um, some, some of it's also going to depend on how the restaurant guidelines shift and then change. Um, you know, I will say that in, you know, even two parking spaces, a restaurant can probably only see 10 or 12 people at the most. Um, so, you know, it may or may not be worth it to any specific business. Um, but uh, we, we think, think that, that providing this as an option is, is great. great. And I have heard some, you know, creative, creative ideas, ideas already from different business, business owners who, who would definitely be interested in taking advantage of it. it. Um, and, and I know, I know that Bill had talked about, about, you know, making sure to reserve delivery spaces and handicap spaces and potentially also um, curbside pickup up spaces if, if it was, you know, so popular that we needed to make sure there were still a few spots available on any given street. So um, I think um, given that the parking demand is so much lower right now, I, I think it's uh, worth, worth a shot. Great. Um, uh, Dan and then Lauren, and then Donna. <laughs> I, I support this idea fully. Um, and I think the best way to go about it is much, much the way Bill described it, which is sort of a nonlinear way, way, which is let's, let's not regulate. Let's, let's, let's um, you know, let's, let's put as few restrictions as possible on this to let people be as creative as possible. Because knowing that this and letting people know this is a you know, you know, this is, is really a reaction to this year, to this situation, these circumstances, but let, let people be creative and, and, and let's see what happens. Um, because of the unique parking situation, if we reach a point where we needed more parking downtown because there were so many people coming and shopping, um, I think that's a problem that, well, I don't know if we want it necessarily, but it's, it's certainly the retail businesses would be, um, would be happy about it. But I think, 
you know, you know there's, there's there's less, less risk, risk in a year like this where the parking issues are abated because of the changes. But I, I strongly think that if we could build something um, that, that gave people free rain, that, that that's, that's the way, way to go about this. Uh, and, and I'll just note that uh, Rotterdam in, in uh, the Netherlands is doing this this summer um, and, and using the same sort of model, which is trying to regulate this as, as minimal as possible to let people, you know, businesses that are trying to survive um, do it uh, without, without, you know, sort of having to conform to, to any, any particular type of, of standard um, or, or permit regulatory process. So, so speaking, speaking of that, I'm going to just, just interject really quickly, quickly that, that I, I think, think we want to make sure that it's clear that if we are blowing open the rules, be as creative as you want, uh, but meet ACCD guidelines, um, that, that that is for a temporary parklet, but if someone wanted a longer term uh, parklet, that they might have to, they would have to go through the regular process. Um, is that right? Is, is that that's also your understanding, Bill? I, I would say my sense would be, you know, we've got five spaces of parklets, constructed parklets now. Um, don't really know where the former down home one may be going, but it'll probably end up somewhere. Uh, personally, I'd say for this summer, rather than to try to overlap the processes and have a formal, I'd say let's just suspend that process for this year, have people do these smaller parklets. Um, and, and, you know, we may need to do a little research to see what it's going to take. I, mean, I think there's going to be some platforms required to, to, to because ACD says you have to flush the curb to, for, for access onto them. So it's not just putting up, like I said, uh, cones and yellow tape. It's, 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 there's there's going to be a little, little bit of something. So, um, but, but, but maybe, maybe just, just say, hey, we're suspending that process next, next November. You know, after, 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 after this ends on October, we'll reevaluate how this went. went. Maybe we decide we can add more parking spaces because of those or whatever. You know, we'll make those decisions at that time, but I personally think you should not. I mean, it's your policy decision. I think we got to not do more formal parklets while if we're doing a free, free for all. Okay. Um, Don, I think you were next. Okay. Um, I, I, I do, do like your letter. letter. Thank, Thank you, Bill, Bill and the simplicity of it. I, I, strange, strange enough, I have just a bit of a concern if we're wanting parking spaces for people to come and do takeout, and they, they don't, don't want to stay in one of the newly available sitting spaces, can they, they get, get there? I mean, I've been going out almost every day for my picnic, picnic car lunch, if it's nasty weather, or picnic, picnic table lunch, and I'm, I'm amazed how many cars are on State Street. And, and so, so they're, they're not paying. paying. So, so how, how are we going, going to limit their, their time of the few spaces left? left? So, so between you and the police department, fire department, DPW, I'd, I'd want, want you to really look at it holistically and, and note whether, whether we do need to start maybe having meters effective or some way of time limit, some two-hour two two hour limit, something to keep, keep it moving. moving. Because, because that's going to be very dense activity area. And, and bicyclists, bicyclists have been petitioning to have some more space. And, and if we give it all to parklets, then they're, they're not gaining anything. anything. So, so I'm just, just going to put, put that, that out there in the consideration. consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, Lauren, and then Connor. Um, yeah, I also think that this is a great direction to go and good, good chance to try out, um, you know, ways, ways to be nimble and flexible, and flexible for businesses. Um, a few thoughts to consider. Um, I mean, I, I agree with the concept of really trying to be very nimble with this and not overly burdensome for businesses. Um, you know, it might even be the case where someone wants to be able to do like pop-up sales. And then if there's, you know, even like structures that could be shared as different businesses so that you don't need to, you know, lock into trying to get this for the whole summer or something, but maybe there's flexibility in that. Um, I, I was curious the geographic scope, you know, there's, there's obviously our core downtown, downtown and I would have to be re refresh on our parklet ordinance, ordinance or, or does this, um, you know, just, just thinking about which, which, which streets and, you know, is this all down Barry Street? Street, is this just State Maine, Maine? is there other, um, what, what that looks like? I don't know if Bill, you have thoughts straight, straight away. Well, obviously that's your decision. Our suggestion is that it simply be, um, 
Maine from you know, Barry to school and state from Taylor to Maine. Um, not East State and Langdon would be its own thing. So, uh, and that would be it. Uh, you know, I think after that, we've got commu you know, commuter traffic. I mean, we already have enough downtown, but it's a different character. I mean, and I can also picture one, one being on, uh, like, like with, with Bohemian, Bohemian Bakery, Bakery on Berry Street. Um, so, so I don't know. It seems, seems like there, there might be other potential maybe, issues. Maybe others, others by request, request or something. Sure, sure. 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 Sorry, Sorry, go ahead, Lauren. Um, so so one, one other question, question. I, don't I don't know if we're, um, if we're trying to be this nimble or flexible, if there's anything we need to think about proactively for liquor licenses for businesses doing that. I mean, that's where they make a lot of their money, so just throwing that out there. Um, and, then and then just, you know, you know I, I like the giving, giving the flexibility to city, city staff, staff to be able to implement this. So it can, can be responsive and moving, you know, know quickly, quickly and, 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 and all of that. that. Um, just, just thinking, thinking about kind of cumulative impact, so either in how we structure it and, and or just the regular report to council of, you know, what, what, what has been approved, approved, you know, what is, what is the, you know, totality, totality of what is, is happening and what's coming down the pike that we are keeping an eye on. You know, it's each project, project, not just viewed individually, but um, the, the the overall impact, impact on the city. I can, I can respond to that just quickly. quickly. I agree that that's, that's one of the things that we've been trying to figure out. Sort of what's the what's, what's the balance, balance between, between saying, "Hey, we want everyone to do this," and saying, "Whoa, well, wait a minute." You know, we, I, think I think we need to think through things like, like what happens if you know, get two businesses and there's sort of one parking space between them, them and they both want how do we split that? that? I mean, there's a lot of things we need to figure out. Um, but, but we wanted, wanted to, make, again, again, get a sense of, is this a direction, direction you want to go? With, with regard to liquor licenses and things like that, uh, other business, you know, this, these are, you know, it would still be up to the business to obtain whatever approvals they need. We're not, we're, we're saying, here's, here's a public, public space. We're willing, willing to make it available instead of paid parking. We're willing to, make, you know, allow you to use it. We, here's, here's guidance, guidance from the state. We'll work, work with you to make it as simple as possible. But people still need, it's still their business space. It's not a public, you know, I think if we were doing it different, if we were sort of talking about permanently closing one of these streets and making it a public plaza, you know, church street thing where we put benches and tables on this isn't, we, we can't do that actually. That's one of the things that we're telling us not to do. So, um, so I think we would obviously try to help people, but they need to still get whatever permissions they need. And uh, the Department of Liquor Control has a um, new uh, provisional outside consumption permit process that they've outlined, and then it includes um, approval by the city council for the provisional permit. Great. Uh, Connor. And then Jack. Uh, well, certainly support the idea. And I think um, the Lord of Bill is a good idea by request, I think. Um, you should, you should be able to go outside the state of Maine. I think like, like uh, Birch Grove Bakery. You could see them, them set one up, or like you said, Mayor. Um, Bohemian. I, I, I spoke to a few business owners today, and there was a lot of support for this idea. I think uh, a couple, couple things to make clear is, like, like one of them was saying, my God, God like, like, like what Down Home Kitchen did, I can't afford to build the Taj Mahal or something. And I think we need to make clear of that. No, it's got to be ADA compliant, got to be safe, you know? But, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be a monster of a structure. It could be something that you can, you know, you know put it up and take out easily, easily enough there. Um, so I think that's important. I think it's also important to make clear to businesses because a lot of them didn't seem to know. Um, you know, parking is still free downtown until we say otherwise. Um, you know, we know, 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 free free downtown until we say otherwise. And we've not set a date or anything that the meters turn back on. And I think we can be flexible. Um, like like you're saying, Phil, there's a lot of demand coming downtown or something. I don't know when we do uh, turn, turn those meters back, back on, but absolutely, absolutely, I think we should look forward on this. Great. Uh, Jack. Jack. Um, I, I, I like what, what I've heard. heard. I think uh, there, there, there is some potential here. I think, um, again, as, as I said, said with the, the uh, with the mass thing, thing, I think, I think there, there are considerations, considerations that uh, we're, we're going to want to get, get uh, public input on one of the things I'm thinking about is that uh, a lot of these locations are uh, adjacent to uh, to housing and so hours of operation is going to be one of the, are going to be one of the things we should be uh, paying attention to um, and the safety factors of whatever structures being built to Hold the uh, 
the, the parklet. parklet. And, and then, then the other thing, thing is, I just want to tag as a positive or flag as a possible point of consideration whether we want to say limit the, the number of uh, parking spaces that uh, are, uh, are dedicated to parklets and retain some amount for uh, for parking downtown. Do you have any um, thoughts or suggestions on that? I don't, just uh, it should, should be part, part of the conversation, conversation next time. Okay. Um, I, I think, think it, it uh, what, what you were saying also made me think of uh, the, the current limit that, that we have on parklets is that it can't take up, I think it's more than two spaces. Um, and and I, I think, think we, for this, especially if we're trying to maximize the opportunity for businesses, particularly in the um, downtown, if you might want to limit it. it well, I, well, I think, I think we should keep a limit of two. Limit of two. <laughs> so. At least consecutive, consecutive um, for, for one, one for, for one business. business. Um, I mean, we, we, we talked a lot about that, and again, we, you know, you know I, I think, think for if, if, if you're, you're a dining establishment, establishment you definitely, definitely need to, to because, because as Dan mentioned, mentioned just, just to make, make it worthwhile, worthwhile have the dining, dining people. people. You know, you know if, if you're a retail, retail and you're just going to put out merchandise or you know, a table or something, maybe one is sufficient. It could be. You know, also I think depends on. You know, part of part of this is, is you know we don't know specifically who's interested and who isn't, so it might depend on who has neighbors. You know, someone may want to have three, but none of the neighbors want one. So what's the problem? Whereas there may be another where three in a row all want one. So you know, how do we sort that? And, and I really want to hear from people that this is designed to benefit from. I don't want to create rules that don't work. You know, because this is. So, uh, yeah. part, part of the process, process is to, to, to get, get, you know, out with the folks and hear what people want. And I know a lot of them are actually on this is call right now, so we can get some feedback before we're done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Jay and then Donna, and then I'd love to open it up to the public. Yeah, yeah just, thank, thank you. Just quickly, I think it's, like, like Bill, Bill reference, I think it's good that, that you know, what, what we do here is provide some, guy, uh, some, some guardrails around sort of what, uh, how we can manage the process and then leave, leave it to the business community to decide how they can best use it and, and utilize the space. I mean, I certainly think that there's um, uh, opportunities for sharing of parklets. I mean, I know a lot of, a lot of downtown businesses have limited hours. Of course, they have very limited staff and there's, it would, you know, it'd be great to be able to rotate one or the other. I've heard conversations about having a, 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 an established space that um, vendors from the farmer's market could rotate through. Um, so I think that there's a lot of opportunities there. So I'd love to um, sort of have our job be to provide these guardrails that make it safe and then let the business community decide how to best utilize it and what works best for their, for their business. Thanks. Great. Um, Donna, Donna, do you have any thoughts? Well, I, I guess, guess and to use Jay's language of guardrails, I see the city manager and the department heads of our police and DPW to be able to do that with the business community to mix what's safe, what's reasonable, and if that the staff do it, they can be the most flexible once we've said yes to the concepts. So I think the more open we can be, let the staff make decisions after our guidance, the more flexible it'll be. And the and more, more satisfying. satisfying. Great. Great. All, right. All right, comments um, from the public. I know we've got a few folks on here, so. Andrew Brewer had his hand raised. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, you wanna go? go? Hi, uh, my, uh, my, my comments, comments were more about Langley Street, Street in particular. particular. I, know I know this is the parklet section, section, but Bill started, started talking about Langley Street, Street, so it's his fault. Um, but, but I know it's my fault, fault Andrew. Andrew. It, it is always, always your fault, Bill. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll, I'll actually wait until you get to the Langley Street part to talk more. But I do, a couple of years ago, many years ago, when we were discussing the, um, when we, had the idea, we were pushing the idea of the downtown improvement district. And the idea was still in its infancy. I'm not, I'm not sure anybody on city council now looking around was, was involved in that back then. I was. I was okay, there. Thank, thank you, you Ann. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> um, 
and uh, I, I had, had been talking about, about that idea, idea for years, years and it really took, um, well, well, it, it took, took Sarah Jarvis and Greg Guyette, yeah, who was the president of Montpelier Live at the time, time to really, really grab, grab a hold of that idea and, and start, start selling, selling it, pushing it. it. And, and we, we got, got it done. done. But I, I remember, remember that we had, uh, we had we had Ernie, Ernie Pomerlo from Burlington come down. down. Bill, I think you were actually at that meeting once. And... You know, you know, here's, here's, a, here's a conservative businessman, but he, he came, came down and told us, you have to do this. This, this is, is a great idea. idea. You, you have to have a downtown improvement district. And he owns several properties up on Church Street. He was one of the founding members of the Church Street Marketplace. And they have a $800 million budget up on the Church Street Marketplace. And he talked about kind of the history of how Church Street Marketplace came to be. And I remember him saying that it was, it was great, great from the, the beginning, beginning he said, but, but the real magic of Church, Church Street did not happen until the restaurants spilled out onto Church Street. That's, that's when it really took off. Uh, that's, that's what really gave the whole street the vibrancy um, that, that it was, it was, was kind, kind of lacking for the first couple of years of, of the Church Street Marketplace. So, um, and, and I, I we, we, we kind of, I kind of glommed on to that as we went around trying to sell the downtown improvement district to to businesses, businesses and, and, and landlords and property owners, owners in town. Um, and so years, you know, years later, Montpelier is still kind of, kind of in the throes of that, of what, what, what makes, makes for a vibrant downtown, downtown. what's, what's going to do that. And Parklets is, I've always, always been a big supporter of Parklets, and I've appreciated the council's cautious approach um, um, to, you know, how, how many spaces you're going to give uh, towards Parklets. Um, in this particular instance, um, you know, there's some opportunities here because you have a chance to try some things out that normally you probably wouldn't try out. Um, and so you have some, you have a chance to do some of that. You're going to have to set a kind of a sunset on this. You're going to have to say, we're going to try it for X amount of period. And then there's a sunset on any, um, Ordinance, whether, whether, frankly, whether it's mass or parklets or closing line industry, industry, all of these things kind of all tied into the same issue of trying to trying to, trying to provide some flexibility um, for downtowns in this very troubling time. Um, and, and you have a great chance to see whether, whether, whether they work or not, whether they work or not. So um, that's, that's my kind of comments on parklets. Um, I'm, I'm in favor, favor of them. them. You're, You're right, Bill, Bill. You don't, don't want you know sticks and a cone and, and some tape around. You. They, they do have, have to be substantial. They, they do, do have, have to be a legitimate. Um, you, you all know for sure you're, you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna, gonna get, get destroyed on social media about, about lack of parking in downtown Montpelier. Every parking spot you take away is going to be a detriment to downtown. Just, Just be aware, aware of that. <laughs> it's coming. Um, but I, I think, think this might be a good, good opportunity to try and, and, and support what we to try. I'll, I'll save the rest of my comments for Langley Street later on. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Anyone else? I'll go, go for, for it, Wes. Wes. Awesome. I, um, also, I'm a huge fan of Parklets. I think there should be Parklets everywhere. I love the whole downtown filled with Parklets. Um, if you know, you know that, that starts, starts budding, budding up at this proposal, proposal you know, know then, then there's a parking, parking issue uh, maybe, maybe council, council explores building a parking, parking garage i don't know um i, I do <laughs> um three pen just, just for like the two cents, cents of business, business. um three pen would, would not put a part of it in um one we, we have, have just a very, very problematic parking spaces, spaces in, front, in, front in front of our space. space. Um, two, two, I have um, lots of concerns as a restaurant with the restaurant out, down, you know, down, outdoor dining parameters that we have from Governor. Um, and, and then three, uh, we have to be doing risk curbside, which means if I take away the three or two spaces in front of our place, um, that, that doesn't work. I also, so, so, but just, just more generally, just kind of for the council's consideration, I guess, um, you know, I, I do find it very curious if, if the state is telling the city, don't put in your own uh, parklets to be used as a little bit of a public plaza space, um, but they're telling me I can put one in. 
Um, so I don't know the, the difference between eight people at three pennies parklet versus eight people at the city's parklet. Um, and, you know, know, the more, more cynical, cynical take is that sounds like my liability insurance covers it if somebody gets sick. sick. But, um, what the other thing, thing I have to say, um, I, I guess, guess around, around, you know, if, if uh, we, we get, get down, down the road and the, uh, you know, state, state restrictions were eased, presumably because it's deemed safe, safe to do so, um, I, I would, would love to put a part of that out and figure out our wonky, you know, spaces in front of us. Um, it'd be really tremendous. One, One thing, thing I thought I heard mentioned was this idea of, um, you know, know rescinding, rescinding it because of all of a sudden, oh, there's, there's not enough parking. If we invested the time or the resources for any kind of parklet other than some cones with some sticks and some, some dangling things, um, and then the city was capable of just taking that away from us two or four weeks away, um, that would be pretty frustrating. That I think would be the appropriate on a public record way to put it. Um, so I guess, I guess those are just like some of my thoughts around uh, um, you, know, you know, those, those, those considerations. But I do, I'm all for Heartless, I think, cover the whole, everything with Heartless sounds awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Your points, points are well taken there. there. Um, I, wonder I wonder if, so, so just, just getting back, back to your last point, point I'm thinking, thinking about um, the, the process potentially for next year and, um, if, if a parklet is constructed and um, meets, meets the guidelines for this year, you know, know what, what assurances, if any, can we give them for following years? And and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that, but I, I think, think it's, it's worth chewing on. on. And, we and we don't, don't know, know, I'll be honest, I don't know, I know Dan's done a little bit more research than I have. Mm -hmm. There's, There's nothing, nothing really required, required in ACC's guidance, guidance as far as building parklets. You can, can actually just have, you know, posts, posts or whatever. whatever. It's, it's that it has, has to be flush, flush to the sidewalk. So you've got to create something that, that allows it to be accessible. So, so it could just be a platform we actually talked about, uh, you know, maybe, maybe seeing if we could get a design for a you know, generic, generic platform, platform that people could use. Uh, um, you know, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves here with details. details. Yeah, I, I would hope, hope that people would do the absolute minimum that, that they need to be able to do for this year, knowing that we don't know what we're going to do next year. And, and, and it may, you know, it may, it may be, be that it's too expensive. expensive. I hope not. Um, and, 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 you know, as, as we, we learn more, we've got to figure out what, what, what to do. I, mean, I, I think from, from my perspective, we wouldn't be necessarily opposed to just, just posts and, and things uh, but we're, we're, the state, state is, is the one that you know, especially controls, controls the route 14 or, i mean route 2 or whatever the roads are route 12 and 2, and two. Um, so they're going to they're, they're going to give, give us the rules as far as transportation stuff um just, just one, one further thing, thing um dan, dan if you hear of businesses that are not getting a parklet because they're afraid to make an investment that the city is then going to somehow rescind. Um, permission to, to put that out. Um, that would just be really helpful to know. Um, just what that reality is. Like. Uh, there was concern about that idea that it might not be for. I, I don't think anyone's talking about next year yet, yet necessarily, but I think, I think there's interest in ensuring that it can be in place for this season at least. Um, at, at a minimum, minimum people, people may have to invest, invest in, in tables, tables umbrellas, umbrellas, chairs, you know, you know things, things like that. that. Um, um, not, not to mention whatever platform and, and, and safety things. things. So, so, you know, no, there's going to be, be hundreds or, or you know, thousands, two thousand, you know, thousand, you know, you know even for the minimum viable part of it. it. So, um, some, some assurance, assurance that they could at least have it for the season, season and then not to be pulled away, you know, a week after they spend money. That, that, that seems, seems that seems reasonable. reasonable. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it is reasonable, and I, I think we really have to be thoughtful of the fact that, that you know, the normal, normal issues that we think about when we think of what we've discussed parklets in the past, 
parking, parking um, um, you, know, you know, access, the, the idea, idea that, um, you, know, you know, some, some businesses, businesses like Parkwood, but some don't, don't are, are a little, little bit out of the window, window at this point, point in time because so many, many of the rules of, of retail and, and, and traffic in and downtown, downtown, you know, know sort of suspended for the summer, summer and, and, and the fact that we're, you know, you know there's, there's going to be a change in all kinds of diff different activities that, you know, for, for this season, for this summer, summer season, season are limited window to be outside, outside and not freeze to death. Um, I, I, you know, you know I, I think we really, really have to be creative. And, and this, this is, this is one, one of those opportunities where, where if, if we can, can as a council be creative, creative it's a positive and, and, and maybe we think of new ways, ways you know, it gives, gives us an opportunity to have experiments that work, work and experiments that don't work, but those, those experiments that do work, work may change, change the way we approach these parklets along, along the lines of like, like uh, uh, what, what, what Andy, Andy Brewer said. said. Um, you, know, you know, that, that, that changed, changed the way we think, think about some of these streets. And, and so, so, you know, but, but, but keeping in mind, obviously, some of the considerations that West has, has but, but I, I, I think, think we really have to err on the side of experimentation in this, because, because I think there is that opportunity there. there. Um, and then this, this is a really positive, positive unlike the, the masks, which, which are proscriptive and things we have to do to keep ourselves safe. This is an opportunity to help businesses try something different and who, um, that, that benefits them. Anyone, Anyone else, else from the public? Um, we like have a number. number. Um, someone would dial in. Their, in. their number is 239964 has raised their hand. Hi, yes, that's me. This is Adrian at Alameda. Hi. Hi. Ultimately, I'm here to talk about the lane industry closure, but I just wanted to give a little input on the parklet issue. Um, now that, now that the businesses, businesses are open for in-person shopping, shopping, the reality is that most people are still ordering ahead and stopping by for pickup. pickup. So, so what I'm hearing from my customers is that they're so happy that they're parking right, right in front, front of the business, business so that, that they can quickly come in and pick up and be on their way, doing whatever the else they need to do. do. Um, and, and the other thought that, that I had was that... Um, Right, right now, now the, the, the rules, rules for outdoor dining are that tables need to be at least 10 feet apart from, from each other. I don't, I don't know what the dimensions are in for a total, total of two parking spots, spots but how many tables would actually, actually fit in, in that space, and, and is it really even, even worth it to take, take up a parking space, space for what, what I think is two, two very, very few tables? tables. Um, so, so I will... Um, um, Hold the rest of my comments for when we're talking about language industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good points, points. Uh, Donna. I'll just, just follow up on her comment. I mean, you, you could, could designate, designate clear parking, parking spaces, spaces for pickup, pickup like, like on each, each side of State, State Street, so, so that, that within a parameter, parameter there were very easy to see and, and limited, limited time, you know, pickup pick up and have everybody, everybody at least hopefully try to allow those to be, you know, take up, take out orders. Without, Without having, having to police, police it, but, but you, know, you know, I think, I think she brought up a good, good point. Um, anyone else? And Cameron, Cameron we, don't we don't have any other hands, hands raised, raised or indications. Okay. Um, is, is there a motion regarding directing, directing staff to come up with? with New language for a revised, revised parking, parking ordinance, ordinance. or, or parklet ordinance. ordinance. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make, make that motion for uh, uh, direct, direct staff to make revised uh, to make, make a revised standards and, and, and guidance for parklets for the uh, 2020 summer, summer season. season. For 2020 season. Question about order: Do we not have to rescind what we have? Be, that, that would be what you would do next week. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so motion, motion it's, it's been, been uh, seconded. Uh, seconded uh, further discussion. Jack, Jack, did you, you have something to add? Yes. I assume, I assume that, that uh, this is something, something else that would be added to the agenda, to the agenda for our special meeting next week. week. So, so I was just going to I was just going to comment on that. That would be our goal. Um, this, this one's, one's a little, little bit more complex, complex than, than the masks. Um, and, and depending on our, our current, you know, what, what level, level of conversation we have with the business community, we really want to get it right, right for them. them. So, so I just, just 
the, the, the shot, shot would, would be to try to, try to do it for, it for next week, week but, but also, if, if not, follow them. And that's, that's not, not part, part of the motion. motion. So if, if, it, if, if it doesn't, doesn't make it, it doesn't, doesn't make it. it. That, that's, that's our goal. goal. Right. Okay. okay. And any, any further, further discussion, discussion on this? this? Uh, uh, Lauren. Um, just, just one, one thought, thought kind, kind of building, building on what a couple of the comments um, we heard, heard from businesses that sounded like, like are really, really relying on the access, access of um, parking, parking for takeout. takeout. You know, you know we, we, we could think, think about structuring it where, where um, you, know, you know, there's essentially the, the guardrails we talked about for different, different sections of street, but at a certain amount, we get a lot of flexibility and um, and nimbleness of the city staff to just move ahead with. And then, and then if we reach a certain critical mass, mass we might start kind of interfering with that ability for, for parking. And then, then we revisit and, you know, you see how it's going, going and hear from various businesses, businesses and, you know, and then, then could expand it further, further if it's a roaring success, success and, um, could just, just, you know, you keep, keep ourselves within, within a, a certain, certain um, containment, containment so that we don't create an inadvertent problems with this, but can really support the businesses and want to pursue it. Uh, Jay? Well, I just, I just want to add quickly, quickly too, that I know when we, we, we all uh, um, tend, tend to think, think of park, park, we associate Parklet, parklet with food service. service. But, but in, in, in my, my mind, mind, a lot, lot of what we're talking about is providing sort of outside retail, retail space for different businesses. businesses. So, so I think, I think that, that there's, you know, the uses of the, the, the outside space um, will, will surprise us at the creativity, creativity of our business owners, owners downtown, downtown and how, how they can be utilized. I think, I think that we need to make sure that, that they're safe and we're managing traffic and, 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 and you know, our ADA compliant, compliant and all of those things. things. But I think it's, it's, it's you know, I, I know that there's lots of downtown businesses that are so, you know, have, have such, such small retail space that, that they have part, they, they, it's really, really difficult to maintain six feet, feet for their, their customers. customers. So, so it might, it's, it's an art, it's, 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 I think it provides more space and unique opportunities for, for business owners to be creative and, and help, help grow their businesses. Great, yeah. yeah. Any, Any other comments or from, from the public? public? Okay, okay. Um, all, right. all right, all in favor, favor please, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, okay. All, all right, right. So, so thank you, thank you that, that carries, carries and we'll, um, Add, Add that, that to, to the list, list maybe for next week, week if it's ready, ready but not, not that's okay. okay. Um, so, so I think, I think we're, we're ready to move on to the discussion of the possible closure of Langdon Street. Um, thank, thank you for everybody's patience uh, who are on the line for this, this one. one. Um, so uh, uh, I'm going to either turn this over to Bill or, or to Dan. Dan. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll start with Bill. Bill. <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot to add. Because as I already covered it briefly in the memo, I think it was really just an extension of the part of that idea, but recognizing the unique situation in Langdon. The key question we were wrestling with, um, you know, do you have a full street closure or do you just have parklets? If you're going to close it, do you close it in its entirety or do you allow people to say get down to the underground outdoors parking lot? There's also issues with back access um, to a couple of businesses. You know, state street businesses have back access. Um, Obviously, deliveries, there's, there's residents that live there. So, so there's you know, a lot of things to consider. Um, um, but, but we also had heard, I think Dan had heard a lot of support from, from businesses on Langston Street, Street to at least uh, have some conversations. So we're, we're throwing it to you. you. Uh, Dan, Dan anything you want to add about this before, before we, we jump, jump into discussion? discussion? Um, I, think I think the, the only other piece, piece that I'll say is that, that um, it, it could certainly be considered that maybe it's not 24-7. In fact, I wouldn't anticipate that it would be 24-7. You know, maybe we're talking about only Friday evening and Saturday and Sunday or something like that. So um, I think, you know, this flexibility that may be more or less impactful, to, negatively impactful to some of the conflicts that, that, that they'll refer to. Um, before, before we move, move forward, forward, I just want to check in. in. It's 8.46. It's been more than two hours since we started. Um, are we, do people want to take, take a break now, now or should we finish this conversation, conversation and then take a break? break. That's, That's sort of my inclination, inclination but um, I, want I want to be sensitive, sensitive to what, what, what your needs are, dear, dear council. Finish this because people might be here just for this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's finish this. 
Yeah, you need to go. It's okay. Sorry. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, no, sure. I am. You know, I'm generally supportive of the idea. Jack and I did go down. I think it was Sunday, Jack, and we met with Juliana from J. Langton. Uh, Red, Red, who I see is on here, I think. And uh, Melissa from Sweet Melissa's. So, so, you know, a few of the concerns that came up, you know, I don't like, like the parklet thing, thing, I think, and I don't think, think Melissa's on. Uh, Melissa, Melissa doesn't have space, like, immediately in front of her shop, shop like, like, really. Uh, the tables, especially, especially the socially distance level. level. So, so, in some, some cases, you might need to give businesses the flexibility to actually set up shop, not directly in front of the storefront. And you, and you do, do have, have some room, room on the bridge, bridge there. there. Um, <clears throat> so the, the sheriff's um, parking lot is right at the end. So, so I, I, I don't, don't know if that had to do with like diagonally or we're looking at the rope scenario, scenario of the restaurants. But, but it, it does, does look like, like I, mean, I mean, it, it looks, looks like we would all fit as we were just, just doing a walk around there. there. And, and, and certainly Juliana was interested in maybe bringing Julie out of the shop. So that sort of speaks to Jay's point. You know, it's more than just restaurants. And most of the businesses, I think, were. Fairly enthusiastic, enthusiastic about, about it. You know, again, Brad and Wayne, he was thinking, thinking maybe, maybe from 4 to 11, 11 or something. Um, and, and I, I did call Adrian and Wedge, he's on the line there, just talking about, about some of our concerns. concerns. Um, I, feel I feel like it's one of these things, things where, you know, people are going to be upset no matter, matter what we do on this to some extent. And I, I think we need to be a little bit nimble and maybe adjust as we go on. And just, just keep in mind, mind maybe it, it, the first, first time we do it, it won't, won't be the right way. way. Maybe, maybe the hours should change. change. Maybe, maybe the parameters should change. Um, but, but if you're, you're looking at some of these, these and again, again, I'll, I'll use like some of the restaurants as an example. example. I, 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 I think that could have a very, very real and an immediate impact on their viability going forward. It was so much uncertainty. Just to have the guarantee of having some tables out there that they could use. So, so I, I, I think it's, it's going to be clunky. clunky. I, think I think it's, it's going to be awkward, awkward if we do go forward with this. But, but overall, you know, if we can take into consideration, consideration the needs of as many people as possible, um, it, it's, it's a positive thing, thing to do. So if, if I, I may, um, I, think I think there was, was um, I, I, so so I was copied, copied on a lot of the emails that Dan received, received from businesses. On uh, their thoughts on uh, the possible closure of Langdon Street and. Uh, it was very, very generally, generally like very, very positive. Um, I think um, I think it'd be good to, to clarify that just, just a few provisions. So one, one is that we would definitely, definitely need to maintain a lane for um, safety for emergency vehicles. Correct. Um, beyond, beyond that, I, there, there, I think one of the concerns that I heard was around that the, the parking, parking space. Um, that, that is, is sort of across, across from uh, uh, outdoors, outdoors or next to get up. Um, just uh, so, so in, in, in with that um, space, space in mind, mind uh, is so, so I mean, on, on the one, one hand, parking is free downtown, downtown so there may be other places, places to park, uh, but they're, they're slightly, slightly less, 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 less proximal. proximal. Um, Alternatively, is there what, what is, is the opportunity, opportunity for people, people to um, continue to use that, that if they live there? Um, what are your thoughts on that, Bill? Uh, we, don't, we don't, you know, you know that's, that's one we've got to work, work out. out. I mean, we, we, we don't, don't have, have a, I don't, I don't yet, yet have, have a clear, clear sense of who's using, using that space. space. Um, you know, mm -hmm. at one point, I think it was you who had talked with the owners, owners of the building, and they were like, well, my tenant, tenant no, they, they can just park, park somewhere else, else. It's free. But if, so, so presumably, you know, State, State Street, Street would, would be a good option since it would be right next to the building, but if there's going to be parklets there, there, you know, so, so I, think I think we do, do need to look at that holistically and figure out where people can park, and if there's some place nearby that we can provide for them, even if it's, I don't know. It, it, you know, like, like Connor said, it's, it's going to be clunky. clunky. We want to sure sure. we yeah. take everyone's needs into consideration. Well, and I, I know I and um, Connor certainly tried, tried to reach out to, um, and, and Jack, Jack you know, as well, tried, tried to reach out to a, a number of folks um, in, in those, either, either businesses on Langdon or those, those, particularly those business owners. Um, so, 
what, what I'm envisioning the conversation is tonight is, do, is this a direction that we want to go? And that, that between now and our next meeting, um, we would have more, more detailed conversation, like, like more, more detailed conversation, conversation to happen um, to frame, frame up um, a solution, at least the, 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 the first, first solution. solution. <laughs> maybe, again, again, maybe it's clunky, but um, what, what does that, that first solution look like? Um, if that, that makes, makes any sense. sense. Um, um, other, other thoughts, thoughts on this? this. Uh, Jay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just I, I, fully, I fully support the idea, idea but you're right. We've got, got to have the input, input from the business owners, owners and to, to figure out exactly what, what this looks like. So I don't think we can craft something tonight that's going to make, make sense, sense for everyone. So, so if, if, if we were looking at it um, for our next, next meeting, to, to, to be able to gather that information and try to come up with some guidelines to make it work for everybody on that street, I think that would make the most sense. Um, just, just while I'm thinking about, about it, uh, the, I, I, I did talk with uh, one uh, property owner on State, State Street about, about the possibility of making the closure just from the parking lot on so that, so that people could get in and out of that parking lot. lot. And I mean, I mean he's, he's one data point, but he was particularly not interested in um, having, having two-way two traffic just at the beginning of Langdon Street. He thought, thought if you're going to close it, close the whole length, length of it. Of it. Um, so, so again, again one data point, point. Jack. Jack. Well, well, another tricky thing. thing. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a complicated place, place to make this work, work even though I've always, always thought it would be great to have, uh, have it be as much of a pedestrian mall as possible. But, but you, you know, know, we have a like new outdoors, outdoors where people bring their bikes, bikes they pick, pick up bikes, they do stuff like that. And I know there's a lot of people. A lot, a lot of little, little kids, kids get, get dropped, dropped off and picked up at uh, contemporary, contemporary dance fitness, fitness and, and this might be a good, good time to do it because they're probably not doing in-person in -person that classes, classes up there this year. year. But but, uh, mm -hmm. but but as, as we, we think about this long term, that, that is a place, place where at at, at times where classes, classes are, are are starting and getting, getting out, there's, there's a lot of people who go through there. But, but I, I would like, like us to, to try, try to make, make all those things work. work. Yeah, yeah, agreed. agreed. Um, um, any, any other thoughts, thoughts from, from council, uh, Connor, Connor, and then uh, uh, I want to open it up to the public. public. Just a, like a question, question on the emergency vehicle, vehicle lane, lane now. Um, that, that bridge, bridge is such, such a large piece of Langdon Street. And I, and I figure, like, a fire truck going, going down there, there that takes up the whole, whole space, space pretty much, much right? Uh, so, so are, are we taking, taking a lot of that off the table? table? Um, no. Um, we would, would certainly, certainly want to talk, talk about this. this. The fire, fire chief, chief has talked about this in the past. He, he says, and I don't, I don't want to speak with him, we would include him, but we did talk about, about this this morning before this meeting. meeting. He says, basically, as long as things can be quickly removed, um, so, so if they're, you know, if they've, they've got to come, come through, through and it's like, oh, get the tables, tables out of the way. way. It's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's building, building permanent, permanent structures, structures that would prevent the, the vehicles from getting, getting through. through. They, they also have, you know, again, again I think there, there, if there was something, something on, the on the other side of the bridge, of the bridge they, they could approach it from, from Elm Street, Street. If, if, if there was a fire. If just, so, they, they, you know, crossing the bridge is an important thing. If something's happening right there, you know, you know, like the, the you know, know University of Andrews, Andrews building, then they, they need to get right, right there in the middle of Langdon to, to deal with, with it. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's the issue. issue. So it's, it's, it's making, making sure, sure when I say keeping lane, lane it doesn't necessarily mean keeping an open lane, lane it's making sure that there's nothing obstructing, permanently obstructing an emergency vehicle from getting down there, any ambulance or a fire truck. Or Parkland. Right. right. Well, well yeah, yeah, I mean, so, uh, uh, right. right. If, if they, they were, were to go out into the street, street the park in the parking, parking space is probably fine. fine. If, if, if we were to allow those to go out into the street, street they'd have to still be wide, wide enough yeah. to, get to get a truck, truck through. Any comments from the public on this? Andrew Brewer has his hand Go for it, Andrew. Hi. Hey. Um, so, thank you, Andrew Brewer. I own uh, 
the building at, at um, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the big, big building on Langley Street, Street. Um, 8 through 20 Langley Street, where Onion River, River Outdoors, outdoors is. is. Um, and I, I, I should preface, preface I don't, I am no longer in retail. retail. I don't own a business anymore, so I'm not speaking for anybody on Langley Street necessarily. Um, but, but I, I can sort of have some experience uh, being, being a business on Langley Street. Street. Um, and I, I, I had sent, sent when, when I, when I, I got notice of this, I had sent an email, email um, to, to a lot, lot of the, a lot, lot of the people in the neighborhood, a lot of the business owners, owners in the neighborhood. Um, and in, in no particular, particular order, I said, you know, there's, there's some, some, some of the things right off the top of my head to concerned about would be deliveries and trash pickups. Um, the Casellas comes, comes down the street, um, that, that monster truck. Uh, they, they pull, pull up, up in front of Onion River's, River's front door, door and they, they actually back, back up. They, they put it in reverse and back into um, my, my parking lot, lot so that they, they can then pull forward to get, to get out those dumpsters. Um, they, they need 90, 90 feet. Um, that's, that's what I'm always told. 90 feet to be able to get, get out of one of those dumpsters. dumpsters. And they, they cannot pull down Hayes in place, which is that little alley um, and behind. They, they cannot, cannot get down there. Um and, and then, then I, the, the, the senior, senior Mr. Brewer is also on the call here. He owns the building across the street. And, and same, same thing, he's got uh, Casella um, picks up um, on, on his side, side of the street as well. well. Um, delivery, delivery truck, because you know, the, the dumpster, the, the, the Casella comes very early in the morning. morning. That, you know, you know, if, if you're, you're thinking about a timing of when you will close the street, that probably wouldn't be a problem. They come very early. And there's a reason for that. They come because there's nobody in town at that time. There's no cars in the way. There's no little kids. Uh, walking, walking to school, school that they have, have to worry, worry about. Um, that's, that's why they come, come that early. early. Um, so, so that probably would be a problem if you're thinking about hours. Delivery, delivery trucks is a different matter. For the, for the most part, part there, there are a lot of deliveries in the morning, whether it's food deliveries, beer truck, truck deliveries. Um, but deliveries, deliveries do happen all through time, time of the day. day. UPS comes late in the afternoon usually. Um, same, same thing. They have a very difficult time getting down Hayes in place. Um, I, I, I dare say impossible. Uh, UPS, UPS can probably sneak down, down there, but nothing bigger than that can get, get down Hayes in place. place. Um, if if Langley Street, Street is closed at the entrance to Langley, right, right at the front, front um, that, that leaves Hayes in place as the only access to those parking lots back, back there. Um, um, it's a shippy parking lot in my own parking lot. Um, so, so you're, you're going to have people coming in there and, and trying to execute some, some kind of weird eight point, point turn to get, get back, back out of there uh, when they do that. Um, over, over the years, I'm going to go back to my Ernie Palmer analogy. analogy. Um, you know, you know I've always, the idea of closing line industry has come up, and I've only had this conversation several hundred times over the years. Um, and I, and I, I don't, I don't know, know if I've ever been for or again. I've always said there's some things to think about. And again, as, as Jay said, said, we have an opportunity here to experiment, experiment with some things. Um, I've always been worried about closing it permanently because you're never going back. When something like, like that is closed, it just, it just seems to be like there's no going back when you do something like that. And, and, and as Jack said, you know, the type of products that Onion River sells, the customers do want to park relatively close to the store. They're not going to park behind, they're not going to take parking behind City Hall and drag their busted bike. You know, you know, across the across Main Street, Street State intersection, intersection to get to get to, to, get to River Sports, they, they do need to be relatively close to, to that store to get there. Um, but, but I always thought, well, well, if we're going to try this, I wouldn't close it at, at the entrance to Langdon. I would actually close it, you know, at, at the corner of Bunny River. River. But, but of course, that brings up the parking lot behind uh, my dad's building. Think of it as the you know, the back door to Capitol Grounds. Um, that, that parking lot back there, the WCA parking, parking lot right across, across the street, they, they do need to be able to get in and out of there. Um, I, don't I don't know if there's if the landlords would be on the, on the hook for any lease obligations, obligations they have, uh, you know, in, terms in terms of people having in their lease that they can park back there. The only way for them to get out of there would be to come out, zing across my parking, parking lot, and then go out in place, assuming they can't go out the wrong way down Langdon. That would be the only way for people to get in and out of there. So, so even, even closing Langdon on the, the corner, corner of my dad's building, you'd be increasing a lot of a lot, a lot of traffic. You know, it would, be, it would still be a flow it would be coming, coming in and out of there, there but it would be increasing a lot of traffic. Um, in, in terms of closing Langdon Street generally, you know, 
it's, 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 about, it's about, about vibrancy. vibrancy. And, and if you're, you're going to close the street, I'm in favor, favor of it if there's a good plan for, for what the vibrancy is going to be. What are we, why are we closing the street? Um, and to me, it's restaurants being able to sell out into the street. Um, that's, that's the vibrancy. The vibrancy. It's, it's difficult for retailers to log have their inventory out of the street every day and then pack it back in every day. It's a great, great idea, um, but it's not, not as easy as it sounds um, being, being able to do that. that. So um, having, having said all that, that I think this is a great opportunity to try it, to see, see where it works. As Connor said, whatever you decide this week, week it probably isn't going to be perfect. You're going to want to tweak it and change it. Um, but, there but there are definitely, definitely some things we have to think about here. The dance, dance studio, studio, you're, you're right, right there, not, not going to be uh, holding, holding classes this summer. summer. Um, um, so, so we don't, don't have to worry about uh, parents picking, picking up kids, kids um, coming, coming and going there. Um, but, but those, those are, my are my thoughts, thoughts and, and I see that there's some, some other people on here, here uh, who are also in the area, so hopefully they'll weigh in. Thanks. Kevin. My name is Kevin Ellis. I live in East Montpelier, so I'm not a taxpayer, but I do uh, use the city of Montpelier as my office, and I'm proud to do so. Um, and I uh, now the down home's gone. I'm not sure where I'm going to host my meetings anymore, but we'll figure that out. This, this is an opportunity to do two things. It's an opportunity to uh, uh, protect the safety of the public. So that, so that they, they can, can instead, instead of being cramped, cramped on the sidewalk as we were last Saturday, Saturday uh, spill that out into the street and have more space, space to walk and, and, and socially, socially distance. If, if we can continue to allow to give, to give the streets over to the automobile and, and confine people, i.e. shoppers, to the sidewalk, uh, that, that hurts businesses. businesses. And, and it also threatens people's safety, safety in the pandemic. pandemic. Number, Number two, two, it's about, about prosperity uh, by, by bringing what Andrew calls vibrancy, vibrancy back to downtown. I, I, we, we, the, the data, data on this issue is very clear. Um, uh, rents, rents go up. up uh, the, amount the amount of revenue, revenue made by merchants goes, goes up 20%. 20%. New, New York, York City is closing 40 miles, miles of streets. And Cincinnati's doing it. We're doing it all over the, the country. country. And, and if we're, we're going to be a city of the, that, that moves into the future, we, 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 I, I urge you strongly to do this. this. The, the merchants, merchants will innovate. innovate. People will innovate. Uh, they, they will, some will move, move their stuff out in the street, street. Some, some will not. Some, some restaurants, restaurants will like it, some, some won't. But we, we will move into a future where the downtown is about uh, people gathering and enjoying the city um, instead of circling the city in their, their car, car looking, looking for a parking, parking space. space. Um, I've, I've been, been on, on this hobby, hobby horse for a long time. time. I, think I think we should make uh, Barry Street, Street one way. way. Uh, I, I think it's dangerous. dangerous. I, think I think Langdon, Langdon is dangerous, dangerous right now. And it is it's it's no, no fun, fun to be on because there's, there's too, too many cars. cars. And, and uh, I hate to bring it up, but God, Dan, Dan had, had a good, good you know, that, that suggestion about Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday maybe is a decent, decent compromise. compromise. If, if the design, design of this is too, too difficult politically, but I would, I would urge you to try to, try to do it, it uh, every, every day, at least, at least in the short, short term. term. Thank, Thank you. Um, you can Sorry. Raise, 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 raise your hand. Sorry? Leeds Brewer. Oh, oh yes, yes. yes. Um, um, before, before you leave, I just, just want to highlight um, something from what, what Kevin, Kevin said, said, which is that if other, other cities are doing this, I wonder how they are navigating issues of uh, access, access to parking lots, lots and uh, obligations, obligations that, that landlords, landlords may have to their uh, tenants. tenants. We're not, not in, we don't have to invent, invent it. it. Um, uh, uh, Leeds. Hi. Hi. Um, the, the parking lot that everybody's, that everybody's been talking about, about is behind, behind my building, which is the building that it uh, Jay Langdon is in, and also uh, the get-up. Get uh, there are six parking spaces back there that I own. Um, presumably one, one for each of the apartments in the building. And uh, there are actually only, I think, four people in the building now that have cars out there. Um, so Bob Watson is one of those spots from uh, Capitol Rounds. 
There are also three spaces back here that are owned by Steve Everett that are occupied by the dentist and uh, the, um, what's the name of the, the, the shop, oil, 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 oil shop, shop there. there. And the Florida, Florida shop. shop. No, no, I guess, I guess the Florida shop, shop is gone. gone. Well, anyway, um, and, then and then also Steve, Steve Everett owns the, the, the um, lots that, that is it's right directly, directly across, across from the Andrews building, building that it has a WCA spot in it and, and a couple, couple of other spots. spots. Um, one, one of my problems is that uh, one, one of my tenants, tenants works, in, works, works odd hours. hours. Uh, she's, she's an evening nurse. nurse. So, so she, she doesn't, doesn't go in and out at hours that normally would, would be good, good for having the street closed. Or, or rather, rather, she, she does go in and out on hours that would be good to have the street closed. And uh, uh, also, the other thing that, that I don't think everybody really maybe even knows, knows about is that, that um, Juliana, Juliana Jennings, Jennings uh, does, does a lot of her uh, business with kickers, kickers that um, get, get stuff, stuff for her to sell, sell in her, her shop, shop if she hires to do this. And they, they come whenever, whenever it's convenient for them, them to come to drop off their stuff. stuff. So, so they, they don't, don't have any kind of schedule. and. Uh, they, they, they are going to be able, able to want to get in and out, out whenever, whenever it is they, they come. Um, so, so I just speaking of that, I kind of throw, throw that into the mix and make sure that it, it gets, gets addressed in some, some way or fashion. Uh, and, and that's, that's about, about it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, especially, especially as we uh, consider, consider the specifics, specifics of this and, and working out those details, details knowing, knowing who those players, players are is going to be really important because, because it's going to come, come down, down to some of those um, those details. Um, I, did I did chat with Steve uh, Rubellini and Steve Everett, Everett got a, that, 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 that that list of folks um, that uh, that they, they had for, for tenants. tenants. And anyway, I can be in touch, touch with uh, Bill or whoever, whoever about some contact info, info there. there. And I know Connor's, Connor's also reached out to to some, some of them as well. So. so Thank, Thank you. you. And, and we'll make, make sure, sure that, that we follow, follow up with folks. folks. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, uh, Adrian. Yes, yes hi. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I do parking with a spot, spot um, that um, belongs to Steve Everett. Everett. I, I pay, pay for that spot part as part of, of my, my rent. rent. Um, I have, have for six years, years. Uh, and I'm concerned, concerned about, um, I'm concerned about losing, losing that spot, spot first, first of all, and also about the fact that, um, I get, I get deliveries, um, multiple, multiple times, um, a day, um, all week long. long. And, and I, I, I know, know that Andrew, um, voiced earlier, earlier about deliveries and said that normally they happen in the morning. morning. Well, that, that doesn't, doesn't happen anymore. anymore. That's, That's not really the reality right now. Um, they, they used to all happen in the morning. But now, now I get deliveries all times of the day, every, every day. Because, because of the fact that, that um, you, know, you know, these other businesses, businesses are, uh, that, that are delivering are hurt by the fact that restaurants are open and other stores and shops are open. So, they, they have fewer, fewer delivers, so they've cut, cut their, their you know, know, drivers, drivers down, down and they've adjusted, adjusted their schedules so that uh, uh, deliveries come, come all times time during, during the day right now. now. And, and then they, they always park on Langdon Street and come, come in my back door, door which is the easiest way, way to get into my space to, to deliver. Um, and then multiple, multiple times a year, year I, I, I get deliveries from... <clears throat> Uh, for product that, uh, that come, come in very, very large trucks, the 18 wheelers. And when, when I first opened my business, they used to park on, on State Street and come, come in through the front door, which was very, very problematic because, you know, you know cars, cars couldn't, couldn't be around the truck. truck so, so it caused, caused all, all kinds of traffic issues. And, and then pallets were on the sidewalk and keeping, you know, people walking on the sidewalk. So, you know, quickly that got switched to Langdon Street and it's, so, so much easier, easier to, to get those deliveries in, in the back, back where, where there's not, not as much, much traffic, traffic and, um, you know, you know it takes time to unload pallets and, pallet and things, things like that. that. You have that time in that, that back parking lot, lot um, to, to do, do that. that. So, so if, if, if that's, that's not available, available then it's going to end, end up on State Street, Street again. again. And, and, and if there's parklets, then where are they going to go? So I just see multiple problems with this. So I just wanted to voice my opinion about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. It's, it's good, good to know, know what your reality is.
Um, other thoughts or comments? And, and, and just for context, context, I feel like this is all a, a, a time, just a time to take in what, what people's reality is so that, that we can, um, if, if we're going to move forward, craft, craft something that, that makes, makes sense for everybody. everybody. Or, or as many people, people as possible. possible. Um, any, any other comments, comments from, from the public? public? Um, I, I, I see that Wes, Wes is still, still on the line. I do have a question. Um, just, just thinking about restaurants. restaurants. Um, it, I, I wonder, wonder if there's if there's, there's interest. Um, do, you do you think, think that there's interest from restaurants to spill out onto Langley Street? Street? If, if you don't want to comment on that, that's, that's perfectly fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, I mean. I mean in, in this, this sorry for my, my I decided, decided to sit outside, outside um <laughs> you know, out, um like a david, david lynch, lynch movie, movie thing going on um uh yeah, yeah i mean i, I very, very much a, uh, echo um andrew's opinion, opinion. Uh, I, I think, think there's, there's a lot of logistical questions, questions but, but I, think I think closing like seems, seems great um in, in a general, general sense, sense. Uh, you, you know, know we, we are, are not technically, technically on Langdon, Langdon Street. Um, you, you know, in some, some kind of broad scope, scope of things, things, I'd love for an exemption to be able to have a space, space on Langdon, Langdon Street, um, to put out tables, tables and, and chairs. Um, it's, it's very, very much, much the same for as, as the park thing, thing, thing for us. us. I, I under, under the current parameters, parameters that restaurants, restaurants are allowed to have outdoor seating, I have no interest in putting outdoor seating out. Um, but, but down, down the line, uh, you, know, you know, I don't, I don't know, know if it's a month, month from now or whatever. Um, if, if it's healthy and safe, uh, for, for increased, increased capacity, capacity and, and for, for people, people to be gathering more, um, I, I would certainly love to set, set up tables and chairs in an area on Langdon, Langdon Street and have, have our guests, guests sit outside. outside. That, that would be for us preferable, preferable to our park it out front. front. Um, specifically because of what, what the street looks, looks like physically in those parking space, spaces, spaces right in front, front of our place. place. Um, I, I could very, very much imagine um, uh, the, the, the tavern, tavern and, and um, Sweet Melissa's, Melissa's putting, putting out spaces uh, out on Langdon Street, Street, and I think that that would look, look very great, great. Talking, talking about, about vibrancy, vibrancy and, um, like, uh, I definitely also agree with everything Kevin, Kevin, uh, Kevin Ellis, Ellis said earlier. earlier. Um, and I guess I just, as I was listening, listening to this whole discussion, um, my, my two, two cents, since I'm talking, is, uh, it, it seems, seems to me if you just, from, from the corner of the building, building there where you get up is to the corner, corner of Andrew's, Andrew's building, um, if, if you cut, cut it, it off there, there um, and, and allowed actual car traffic, traffic in the first part, part of the street, um, and signed, you know, you know at, the, at the entrance and said, you know, no, no outlet, um, you know, local traffic, you know, traffic, traffic only, only. And, and made it two way, way then, then everybody could get in and out of behind the building, building and the CX lot, lot and, and everybody could then turn, turn into, um, Andrew's, Andrew's parking, parking lot, lot as well, well or, use that, that as an out um that, that seems to me to solve, solve it, it. You, you just close, close the street from, from there on down, down. um just as an, an idea, idea maybe you grab the you know, know where, where where mary alice had her park, uh, park parklet. Lit. Maybe, maybe that's still, still a parklet, parklet. I, don't I don't know um but, but yeah, yeah i mean it, it, if, if the, the question, question is like generally as a restaurant owner is it appealing to have langdon street closed and filled with Tables, tables and chairs, chairs and people, people dining, dining and um you know, you know the record, record shop putting the display, display out um or you know, know jay langdon, langdon or anybody else. like all that, that sounds fabulous, fabulous to me, me. Cool. cool thank, thank you. you um sarah, sarah. Um, just, just, it just occurred to me that as you're talking, it's not, it's not, it might not necessarily, necessarily be an all or nothing thing, thing cause cause you've got, got online, online, you know, got two lanes with parking and then one, one for travel. travel. So, so you, you actually would have, have room, room to, to put, put in, in, if you eliminated the parking, you'd, you'd have, have room, room to make half of the road carpet and half of it road. And you could even do what Wes said and make it limited, you know, ask for just for deliveries or emergency vehicles or what have you. 
but then, then you, 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 you you split, split the baby, baby in a way that I think that, that you know, you know serves, serves everybody for everybody's purposes. purposes. Well, hopefully, hopefully not, not split the baby, but split the, the split the deal. deal. Just, Just an idea. idea. No, no, that, that, that makes sense. sense. I, I feel, feel like, like um, you know, we've, we've got, got some, some good, good options here. here. Um, um, anyone, anyone else? Okay. okay. Um, so, so just, just on this, um, so just, just on this topic, topic um, I feel like, like we could probably use the motion directing, directing staff, staff potentially, potentially to do um, something to, uh, uh, <laughs> to follow up with some, some language, language about, about the possible closure of Langdon Street and, and come, come up with a, come up with a plan. plan. Um, um, and, and, and we don't, don't there, there, there was really, there's, there's no plan right, right now, so, so and again, whatever plan um, staff, staff can, can come up, up with, with having heard all, all this input, input, maybe we can um, continue to, to discuss that, that react, react to that. that. Um, Dan. Dan. I, yeah, yeah I, along, along those lines of emotion, uh, I'm wondering, wondering if it would make sense, sense to make emotion, emotion along the lines of, of, of um, maybe, maybe not one, one plan, plan, but... but um, you know, you know, at least two plans, plans that, that would reflect uh, an options, options option for, for the council to consider, to consider um, you, know, you know, variations um, that, that we've discussed tonight. Because it seems like, like there's, there's there's the idea of shutting down the street, which, which might include certain uh, time, time limitations. limitations. And, then and then there's, there's the, the other option of at least... Um, having, having a partial, partial closure, closure of the street that, that would keep it open to local flow, flow at, at, at certain times, times. and it, would, it, might it might be nice to see both of those flushed out, out. Um, and, you know, you know for have, have, have another, another conversation, conversation like this where people could actually give, give feedback, feedback on specific proposals as, as opposed to these general, general concepts. Sorry, Sorry, did you say potentially come up with um, some options or, or like a, a couple yeah. of plans? Is that what you're saying? Okay. It's just, right. right. Two, I mean, you know, at least two options. options. At least that's, that's what, what I'm hearing. hearing. I would cluster the two, two the, the discussions into one, one of two groups. groups. Um, you, know, you know, obviously, leaving it alone, alone doesn't require a plan. plan. Um, but, but there's, there's two, two plans, plans really on the table, and it might be nice to have those flushed out and then have a final, final discussion about this. this. I'll, I'll just point, point out, too, there, there is a, a third possibility, possibility, which would be simply to uh, allow, allow the parklets along Langdon, like, like we're, we're doing, doing everywhere else, else and still, still have the lane of traffic and, and access the way it is. So, so, so that's, that's also, you know, I, I think we would probably, you know, you know there's, there's leave it the way it is. There's do parklets only. There's do partial closure, do full closure, or maybe time closures. Uh, so, so I think there's probably several choices. choices. Yeah. Right. I, I, I wouldn't see the full closure as really an option other than, than you know, with, with, with some, some timing element because, because of the deliveries and, and, and parking, parking issues that we've discussed. discussed. Right. Well, when, when, I, I, when, when I say full closure, closure, I mean assuming, assuming we can accommodate that. that. I think the church should get the deliveries at certain times. Right. Um, Lauren. Um, yeah, yeah, I like the idea of having, having options, options and, and um, it, it, it would, would also be really helpful, helpful I think, to get a sense, you know, it was raised, raised earlier, maybe by, by Andrew, of like, what is, what is the vibrancy, what is this going to look like, like? Um, and, and we've heard from, from you, know, you know, from, from certain, certain people, I'd be curious how many folks think they, they would, you know, know it was described as like, it's kind of a pain to have to lug your inventory in and out every day, you know, would the businesses, if we're going to do this, what might it look like if they think they would take advantage of this outdoor space, would um, sweet sweet Melissa's Melissa's and um, Lane Lane Street Street Tavern plan, plan to put tables, tables out if we do this, this or is this, this you, know, you know, for the parklet conversation, conversation, it was very much like, let's let them decide where and how they want to take advantage, advantage of some more, more flexibility. flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. Do we anticipate that, that if we did this, people would, would want to take advantage or are we creating something? I like the idea and I would love to move forward with it, but that was just a piece I didn't really hear tonight and it would be helpful to know this. And yeah, Connor, you said you had talked to a couple of them, so maybe some people have answers to um, to, to some, some of the, the, the interest, interest in, in taking, taking advantage, advantage of this kind of, uh, opportunity. Go, Go ahead, Connor. Connor. Yeah, I was just gonna, um, 
Maybe, maybe it's just because I'm missing out all in person so much, but, but if, if we, we did flesh out those, those three ideas, ideas uh, uh, would, would it be possible, possible maybe just have a socially distant walk down, down the, street the street before we meet again in, uh, over this on Wednesday? Wednesday. I just, I just found, like, you know, uh, when, when Jack, Jack and I went down, down it, it made, made it a lot more real, just like, like seeing the spaces and how, how, how everything would fit. fit. So I, I think, think it might help guide our decision if that was a possibility, just do a quick walk through sometime before Wednesday. Yeah, yeah I'll just caution, caution this one is another one that, you know, we'll shoot, shoot for, for next Wednesday, Wednesday but I'm, I'm guessing, guessing I think, I think it's going to be tough. tough. I'd, I'd also, also invite um, Bill, Bill, certainly, certainly but any counselors, counselors who wanted to come to a business, business association meeting or who wanted to hold a, a special, special meeting for, for, for Lane Street, Street specific businesses uh, and, and affect parties, parties who could certainly. I know, I know it gets, can get tricky with your council open meeting. Stuff, but, but maybe, maybe one of you can come, or three, three of you can come. Well, theoretically, would you be meeting with them next Wednesday anyway? Yeah, yeah we, we have two now weekly, weekly meetings on Wednesday mornings, mornings one for restaurants, restaurants and food service, service and, and one for everyone, everyone else. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying, trying to navigate, navigate Connor's, Connor's request, request there. there. Um, I mean, I mean so, 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 um, if, if uh, so, so Dan, Dan, if you wanted, wanted to have or shop, shop some, some options around to just, just Langdon Street, Street or State Street, State Street related, related businesses, um, uh, just really let us know when that's happening. Um, and, and then, um, Connor, Connor do you want to, can I leave it in to you to, uh, uh, if, if you, you find, find a time that you think might work, work for a, a walk, and then we, we can, can maybe, maybe warn it and uh, have, have it be a, a no, no, no agenda, agenda sort, sort of meeting. Does that, Does that make sense? sense? Okay, okay, I, my cap, but I'm <laughs> I, think, I think we can, we can probably do this like, like socially, socially distance, distance, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, so, so realistically, the only, the only item, item that we have on the agenda next week would be masks. I, I, honestly, honestly speaking, speaking. I mean, we, we might, might get the, the other stuff, stuff but, but so, so you know, we, we could meet at, at six, six and walk down, down Langley Street, give people time to get back, back to there. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Sorry, Sorry I got an. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah Donna, go ahead. I mean, I mean, I mean just, Just to be, be on the safe, safe side, we can all bring our, our mask, mask in case, in case, in case we can't keep the seat, seat six, six feet. feet. It, it might, might not be practical. practical. You might, might try, try, but it might, might not be successful. successful. I, would I would strongly recommend, recommend that. that. Yeah. yeah. So you'd strongly, strongly recommend wearing, wearing masks? masks? Of course. Yeah. It's, it's a good example. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. Sorry, Sorry, my internet, internet is becoming, becoming kind, kind of uh, uh, slow, so I'm sort of losing bits and pieces, pieces of people. Um, so, so, Bill, were, were you suggesting that that, that could be in conjunction with next week's meeting? It just, just seemed like the time, time that everyone had already set aside. aside so. yeah. yeah, OK. okay. Um, we could do the quick meeting first, the uh, vote, and then we'll walk down there. And then we'll meet, meet down, down there in a few minutes, minutes. not afterwards. Going well, to the meeting after Kelsey meeting, Kelsey meeting is a long, long of tradition. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as long as it's still, still light, light out, we can, we can still see it. it. I think we're probably, probably good. good. We can do a free petty takeout. Take <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Would, would okay. that be earlier? They're, 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 they're on the call, too. too. What was, was that, Donna? Donna? Would that be earlier so that it will still be light? So I, well, uh, I, I don't would, know how long it's going to take you to debate masks, but, but if you start at 6.30 and it's June 3rd, my guess is it will still be light after that meeting is over. So my it's guess not, is well. You've talked about masks for a really long time. <laughs> yes. Um, it depends on public, public comment, comment, doesn't it? Well, that's true. true. I, don't I don't know. It's up to you. You can do before or after. You can start at 6. You can do length and then come back. That's how people have to go to their homes. Yeah. True. Good point. 
I guess, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not, not that worried, worried about, about it. Maybe, maybe let's, let's, let's just meet at 6.30. 630. We'll, we'll talk, talk about, about masks. masks and and whenever, whenever we're done, done we'll, we'll, we'll head, head down, down there. there. Um, the way we're going to make sure, sure that people have, have time, time available ahead of time. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, right. So, so we were talking, talking about the possibility of making a motion, motion to yeah. have oh, options. Yes, yes, go ahead. Dan. Dan. I was just going to say, I'll, I'll, I'll make, make a motion um, that, that we direct the staff to develop um, option uh, plans for uh, closing Langdon Street um, along the lines that, that were discussed this evening, evening um, giving, giving the, the council, council options. I'll second it. Okay, any, any further, further discussion? discussion? Um, and, and there's, there's no, no, no one from the public who wants, wants to make any further comment, comment Cameron? I don't, I don't see anyone. anyone. Okay. 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 Um, all right. Uh, so, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. All right, All right, so, so um, great, great, so that, that carries, carries, so we'll, we'll follow, follow up with that uh, at hopefully, hopefully our, maybe, maybe not next week, week but hopefully the, the next, next regular, regular meeting. Um, so, so I just, just want to be conscious of the time, time. it's 9.30, and, and we, we have yet, yet to go through the, the city reopening, reopening plan, um, as, as well as the ordinances, or chapter, chapter 13 ordinances, as well as Five Home Farm Way. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating that we will probably not get to at least one, one of those things, things not, not two. two. So, um, uh, how much more, more is left in the city reopening, reopening plan? plan? I know there's, there's that chart with, with um, a lot of like, like the phase, phase one stuff. stuff. I assume, I assume did, did you, you want, want to go through that, that more de de uh, in, in, in detail, detail or what's, what's, your, your, what's your thought, thought on, on, on that? Well, it's uh, up to y'all and sort of if you felt like you were able to review it in, in any um uh real way we could also put because it's um COVID-19 related if you want to wait to go over it until next week at the special meeting that will also be fine if you don't want to go through this in detail but what it really is is asking um for your approval for how we want to start reopening our facilities and our services once, once we, we get our, our, our staff, staff capacity back, back in, in July. July. So, so if you want, want to take more time to look at it, or if you want, want me to go through it right now, now that's, I, I, I find fine either, either way. way. Um, Jack, Jack, go ahead. And, and this all, uh, none of this would start, start until, until July 1st, right? That, that's our proposal. So, so that's, that's something that I think we could, could put off to our, our next meeting. meeting. We, we want to do that. that. Uh, speaking of our next meeting, Sunset on, on June 3rd is scheduled for 829 p.m. So. Perfect. Um, Donna. Donna. Question, Question, would this stay in place, place if, if we end, end up financially not, not being, being able to bring back, back everybody that's furloughed? So um, that, that it does address that. that. Um, it, it says, says that, that um, our current plans, plans have our employees who have been, been furloughed returning July 1st. first. Um, but that, that is subject to budget needs, and then employees returning may be delayed until July 30th. So, so the, the date of our phase one reopening, reopening plan will have to depend on the return of staff, but, but the city's goal is to have it by July 1st, and then if, if our budget holds. So it, it is dependent on, on, on staff, staff being there. there. So July 1, July, July 30. Okay, okay. I, I, I did read that, that in, the, in, the, in the sheet, but, but I'm still left with, with if, if we're asked to approve this, before, Before we really, really know, know what our financial ability is, is it seems so awkward. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe that's, that's another reason to um, delay on that um, topic. Um, so so I, I think it, it makes sense to put, put that, that off for now. now. And I see that, that um, Dan, Dan Dickerson, Dickerson as well as Alec Ellsworth, Ellsworth are online. And um, I'm, I'm guessing, guessing that they were waiting for... Um, Either, either chapter, chapter 13, 13 or five, five home farm way, way. Probably, probably chapter, chapter 13 um uh the ordinances, ordinances. um alec or, or dan um and any, any thoughts, thoughts on what, what you're sticking, sticking around, around for chapter 13. chapter 13 chapter 13 that's what i thought 
And, and um, Alec, Alec, I assume, I assume you, have you have some thoughts on that as well? Uh, yeah, either, either or both, both whatever we get to. to. Okay. okay. Well, well, we've got, got um, about half, half an hour before, before I'd like, like to be done. done. Um, I, I, is, are, are people okay, okay with continuing, continuing on with um, chapter, chapter 13? 13. Okay, okay, I'm seeing some nods. That's great. great. Uh, all, all right, right. Has, especially since this is one that we have um, put, put off a couple times. times. So this is a second reading, um, and it includes a lot of, um, well, it has some changes from the first reading. Uh, either Bill or Cameron, do you want to um, talk about this at all? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think um, um, although we're going to quickly bounce, bounce it to, I think, Parks, parks folks, folks, we, you, you all, all have looked at it a couple times and made your changes, changes those shown, and then, then uh, we, uh, we actually, actually laid out last time at the request of Parks Commission because, because they, they wanted to go through, through and make some edits, edits and the, their, their suggestions have been provided. We, staff, staff didn't, didn't have any concerns, concerns with them, and so, so they're, they're here drafted for you. Your comments as well as staff's. The only thing that... Well, well, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that now. Um, okay. Um, I would ask Parker to do one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Alec or Dan, Dan, would you like, like to make comments, comments on the change, potential changes, changes to this chapter? chapter? Alex, should I go? I'll go, I'll go ahead and go. And go. Um, do you, do you should, should I share my screen, screen so you can see the, the parts with the language, language or do you, do you all have it open in front of you? Um, I've, I've got, got it open, open unless, unless yours is different from, from what was posted, posted online. Um, no, no, it's not. Okay. okay. Then, then I, I think you can assume that we've, that we've got, got it, but you can certainly reference the different parts and we'll try to follow you. Okay. Um, so I think big picture. You know, you know, we, we saw, saw an opportunity, opportunity considering the fact, fact that, that um, this, this language hadn't been changed since 1990 to uh, craft, craft a parks ordinance, ordinance that, that was, was inclusive of, of all the parks that we, that we now have in, in Montpelier. Montpelier. Um, so currently, you know, you know the, the ordinance, ordinance only pertains, pertains to Hubbard, Hubbard Park, Park and Summer, Summer Street, Street Park. Um, we, have we have a lot more than that now. So I, I think, think the, the, the number one goal for the Parks Commission was to craft the ordinance in a way that you know, yeah, we ensure, ensure that, that um, the provisions, provisions that we want, want there uh, relate to all the parts, not, not just two, two of them. them. Um, so that, so that was the, the big picture thinking, but, but we did see some opportunity to add things that, that weren't there, there that, you know, uh, we, we thought, thought weren't, weren't overly, overly controversial, controversial. They were pretty, um, they made, made a lot of sense within the context, context of parks, and, and, and so we're hopeful that, that you know, ultimately the city council supports them. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll just walk, walk through it quickly, um, you know, you know in, and I'll, and I'll go, go through, through the, the portions of red, but related to the curfew, curfew um, we wanted, wanted it to be 9, 9 p.m. or dusk and, and 6 a.m. or dawn, just so, so that, that, you know, during, during the summer, summer um, when there's, there's more, more light, light, people could, could, could use, use the parks, uh, more readily. Um, I, I, oh, oh, sorry, sorry I'll go back. back. Um, we decided to rewrite section 13-500 as a section that pertains to all parts of Montpelier. And then further down, you'll see where we think about how Hubbard and North Branch and Summer Street. Um, so going, going down, down for, for fires, um, Hubbard, Hubbard Park already had a fire provision, so we just said unless um, you know, reference, reference elsewhere, elsewhere, authorized elsewhere, authorized elsewhere fires are prohibited in Montpelier Park. Parks. Um, for picking and injuring of plants, um, we wanted, we wanted to, add to add fungi, fungi um, because, because I, I think, think Alec, Alec might have said, said that, that that's been, been um, a problem, problem in the park in the past. Um, and then, and then we, we wanted to add, add that, you know, people, people could, could take plants, plants if it's authorized by, by the park and street staff, staff because, because we obviously want people to take um, invasives when, when, when there are um, events, events or volunteer groups that are there to do so. so. Um, and we want to say... And then, and then additionally, additionally, we wanted, we wanted to, to make it okay to pick fruit, as long as it's not damaging the plant. Um, uh, we don't want people introducing plants, plants um, any, any plants, plants unless, unless authorized, authorized by Park Street staff. staff. Uh, we, uh, we don't want people uh, messing, messing with wildlife. wildlife. 
Um, we, don't we don't want people, people smoking, smoking in the parks. parks. This, this is, is the, the one area, area that we thought, thought could, could um, draw, draw some, some, I guess, concerns, concerns just, because just because I know, I know a year or two ago, there was, there was discussion, discussion about something, something like that, that downtown. downtown. Um, but but we, we, thought we thought it was important, important that uh, people, people not be allowed to smoke in the parks. And, and could I jump in and ask a question on the... On, on the smoking, smoking provision, do you, um, did you write that, that so as to, uh, can, can, uh, include vaping? Do you think device containing tobacco or tobacco product means vapes, vape pens? Um, I, I think, think so. so. Um, but, but the, the I, drafted I drafted this, I modeled, I modeled after, after some, some existing language in, in, in city, city code. code. That, that actually, actually pertains, pertains to parks, parks, but the issue that I was concerned about, and sorry, and it references state law when it defines uh, tobacco, tobacco product, tobacco substitute, and then we added um, regulated drug. Uh, oh, actually, there is one addition that isn't in this language, and this um, stems from an email that Bill sent asking, um, I think he was sort of hinting at whether we wanted to ban marijuana usage. And I think that state law already would ban it because um, you could only use on your own property. Um, but I wasn't completely sure. And so I had suggested adding regulated drugs since marijuana falls under that. So that way it's clear that I think you don't want people. I, you're right, that was what I was asking. And I think the real issue is what's the, you know, what's the public need is we just don't like the smell of cigarette smoke. We don't mind, you know, is it, is it the smell? Is it the fire risk? Is it the health risk? So, you know, we should be consistent that everything that falls within that category is what I was trying to think of. It wasn't picking on certain substances so much as what are we trying to accomplish? Um, I, I mean, I think I, I won't speak for the entire parks mission on this, but I think for me, it's, it's everything you just listed. I think it's fire risk. Um, I think there should be um, a public space where people don't have to potentially um, smell, you know, tobacco or marijuana smoke. Um, you know, I think people go to parks by and large to recreate. And so when you're inhaling smoke, it, it sort of diminishes the, the positive impact of recreating. Um, so I, you know, personally, I'm not opposed to people smoking. If they want to do it, they can do it. Um, I just, I don't want it to be in parks. I think parks are a place where, um, if there's going to be one place in a city where, um, people don't have to worry about that, I think the number one place is parks. And I'm sorry, uh, Counselor, I forgot what your question was. And I don't know if I answered it yet. It oh, you wanted to the definition of if, whether vaping. Um, I think it's captured because I think, you know, in my time working for the legislature, this definition has been toyed with. And so I, I think that they've, they've captured it, but I'm not 100% sure. Thanks. Um, so let's see, going down, and then this was the other potential hot topic, and I think it's probably more for us than for city council, but I, I think it also uh, impacts council, and this is relating to domestic animals. Uh, we just wanted to make it clear that when people bring their dogs into parks, that if they're in any park other than Hubbard, well, actually, if they're in any park, they should be following the, the city dog ordinance, and if they're in Hubbard, they should also be following in compliance with the... Uh, they can't go to conduct. So if the dogs are off leash, they should be under you know their owner's control. Um, so, and then we we didn't want any other domestic animals to be brought into parks. Um, so we, we don't, as much as we love cats and and ferrets and other creatures, we we didn't want people walking them through the parks. Um, going down Hubbard. So there. Um, I'll, I'll run, run back, back up really quickly. Uh, the sections pertaining to firearms, destruction, littering, disturbing peace. Um, I think all three of those currently fall under Hubbard and under Summer Street. And so we thought it would just be useful to move them up and have them pertain to all parts without changing them. So you had another question? Yes. Um, it, with domestic animals, uh, does anyone ride horses in the parks? Like in Hubbard Park? And with this road at that? Not that I've ever seen, but I would defer to Alec on that. 
maybe yes. knows. I never encountered a, a horse in any, in any of the parks. And I'm not sure it's a domesticated animal. Um, yeah, that was two, two unknowns for me. Okay, thanks. I, in the, in the um, animal control ordinance, there is a definition for domestic animal, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure horses fall under that. Um, but in any case, I, you know, given the nature of, of a lot of the trails in our parks, um, you know, how wet they are generally and how we're just now beginning to experiment with, um, with allowing mountain biking in North Branch Park, uh, I would say I would be disinclined to allow horses in the parks just because the hooves um, can impact the trails, especially during wet periods. Um, but it's certainly, if, you know, if, I think if somebody were interested in that in the future, it's certainly, certainly a conversation that we could have as a parks commission um, but at this time, I, I'm not inclined to want to allow it. Um, so going down to Hubbard Park, um, there's, uh, so we, as far as allowing vehicles um, or motor vehicles beyond park roads, um, we wanted to allow for law enforcement and emergency services to to access parts of the park as needed if, if they needed to ride you know, a, an ATV or something to get to someone. I will say there's one substantive change that you will not see. And there's there was, um, under the motor vehicle regulations, a, a provision pertaining to snowmobiles and, and that people wouldn't be allowed to snowmobile in Hubbard Park except on um, trails authorized or as authorized by Parks Commission. We decided to remove that. We, we don't want people snowmobiling in Hubbard, um, but you will see further down where we've inserted a provision for the North Branch that we've put that back in because um, I think there is one trail in the North Branch that is still used as a, a, bath, a secondary bass access trail or, or a primary. Um, and then, yeah, that's really it. We've, we added North Branch as a separate section um, you know, one thing that we talked about suggesting was, uh, you know, multi-use trail language, but we thought at this time, because we're just now experimenting with it, it's better if the Parks Commission has some flexibility to, to write our own rules and that. If, if it becomes a problem, then, you know, we could consider the code as, um, you know, another alternative, but that's where we landed on that. Um, and sorry that was long, but thank you for your consideration. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for sticking around through all this. Um, parklets in the park? <laughs> parklets in the park? That's a conundrum. I don't know. It's a new, new territory there. Um, so I have one question, which I think is probably the question for Alec. Um, I think at one point, uh, I feel like we had talked about having a provision for... Um, either aging trees or highly sensitive trees. Um, and I, that's not in here. That's fine. I don't want to hold this up. Um, I just want to flag that as something that I'm, that I'm still interested in anyway. It's like, how are we protecting um, uh, sensitive aging trees moving forward? Yeah. Um, there is an urban forest management plan coming your way in the relatively near future. Um, so stay tuned for that and, and there'll be some things things okay. about those trees in there. And and maybe you know maybe the ordinance is not the right place for that and it's in a uh, in a plan that works. So that's great. Um okay any other questions Connor? I think uh and then more thoughts so if anybody have questions maybe they want to go first. Uh Lauren um just on in the section um, H for wildlife, I I think it's fine. I was just curious. I feel like there's like pretty commonly used language in wildlife law, um, mostly about threatened or endangered species, but that, you know, just pulling up the definition of how they describe like pursuing, shooting, hunting, killing, it's just like more descriptive and acts that create risk to injury. Um, like placing, setting, drying, or using nets um, to take animals. Just, just, just was curious to thinking of, I, I, 
think you, you capture, capture the sentiment and it's and it's fine, but sometimes, sometimes we try to be consistent with other state laws or practices when we're using our language. language. So, so if you'd put, let's see if there's, there's any thought around, around the words that you chose. chose. Um, actually, actually there, 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 there was, we, we, we added, added a few words um, over, over the course, course of, of our, our discussion at our last meeting about this language. Um, so, so release, release was, was new, antagonize was new. new. Um, you know, we, we, we tried to capture everything that someone could possibly do that, that would negatively impact wildlife. But, you know, I, uh, this, this was, this whole, whole thing was something that I put together late one, one night, uh, last week. And so there were some places where I knew, I knew that there was a law elsewhere or something in COVID elsewhere, if there are other places that I honestly have no idea. So I, I would happily defer, you know, if there was better language uh, relating to wildlife, um, I would happily include that or have it be included or have it be considered. But I, you know, I was just trying to do the best job I could getting every scenario. Yeah, yeah I, I totally appreciate that. that. Um, and I, I think, think it does get at, I think like the, the only thing that you sometimes see in the other wildlife statutes are kind of intense, so you don't have to actually injure it, um, and, and, you know, antagonize kind of gets at that, that, but like doing, doing something like setting a trap that if, if nothing's injured, injured or killed under this, I don't know that you have, have captured it, it. Um, or um, what was the other piece of it? Um, Possibly blessed. blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think, I think everything else is pretty, pretty well co- covered. Um, you know, yeah, I, I think they just are a little bit more descriptive and what they mean by antagonize. So things that people might not, you know, is that, is that, is that a more subjective word to some people? Like, I was just interacting with it. What do you mean antagonize? We were having fun together. <laughs> Do you, I mean, Lauren, do you have any specific language? I could, I could send the language that's from our own Fish and Wildlife Department. Um, I don't know that's perfect, and I'm really, I'm not happy to move this forward as is. I think they did a good job getting the intent, but I can send to council in case it feels like there's anything we're fleshing out a little that's helpful. I'll send them that right now. Well, it, it, it sort of, of it, it raises the question for, for, for me, of like, we pass this now, or is there another reading? And what, what I hear you saying is um, that, that we should pass it, and then if there's, you know, we can forward some language, and if, if if there's revisions, we can include this in the next iteration of revisions. Is that is that, is that sort, sort of what I, I, am I hearing you correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd be happy, happy with that. that. I can send it around, and we could always make a, a tweak in the future if we felt like, like there's some, something, something missing. missing. And unless, uh, unless there's, there's other suggestions that people have that, that we could bump together with another revision. Um, but I, I wasn't hearing any necessarily yet. yet. Um, any, any thoughts, thoughts on that, that Bill or Cameron? Cameron? I would be, I think, you know, yeah, yeah, we, we can, can always tweak that. that. The only, the only thing I'm going to suggest is that whatever you decide you want to do on smoking, you're clear about that, that too, and then that, that too, the language that you want. Um, and I just, just note that, that, you know, the part, part about firearms is existing language, but I'm reasonably certain, certain I believe we checked with at least the city's towns that uh, the city actually would not be authorized to prevent the carry or display of the firearms. We can regulate the discharge. Um, so, so, you know, you can leave it in, but we, we don't have any authority to, to, to do anything, anything with it. Um, or, or just, just take, take those, those out. So maybe, maybe there are three three, three things. things: the language about antagonizing part about the firearms, and then, and then clarifying. And I think the, the firearm, firearm thing and the, the smoking thing. thing. I think if you just want, could, could we do that right, right now? That's easy. Just and then, then now it'd be antagonizing. Uh, Connor. Um. I hate to say, like, I don't think I'm there on the smoking. smoking. Um, and I, I, I use Hubbard Park almost every day. I have asthma, and it's somewhat like repellent to me, the thought of like cigarette butts all over the trails. But if I apply the same logic that I applied when a lot of us made the decision, not that the band smoking downtown, um, I'm sort of coming to the same place. 
Um, is this, you know, like, like some, some people thought it was elitist presentation, you know, when that issue came up. Um, other, other people said it was a little further in, in an attempt to get sort of the homeless population out of our downtown areas uh, because they were smoking in storefronts and everything. So when I look at Hubbard Park, I know like a, we actually have a lot of homeless population who live in Hubbard Park there. there. And could this be interpreted as, as a way to keep them out of there, there when already, already they have no place to go? So, so my, my comfort, comfort level just isn't, isn't there yet, yet. Even, even though, though personally I probably agree with it. With it. Um, I, think I think I might, might be a bit hypocritical given my last decision. Uh, Donna. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought we already had, had no smoking in, in the parks. parks. And then the, the whole no smoking discussion has happened, happened for the last two, two three years, years Connor. Connor. Totally, totally unrelated to homelessness of individual smoking. So, so I, I think, think one, one is just, just a health decision, decision to say, is this a healthy example, like, like wearing your seatbelts, seat that, that we don't, don't have smoking, smoking in public, public places as much as possible, and particularly our parks and like, like our playgrounds. playgrounds. So, so I, I I feel, I feel it's important, important we keep, keep that, that message of not having smoking in our parks. If, if, if I may, um, there, there, there is language in, in the code um, pertaining to smoking, but I brought it up as an issue um, to the Parks Commission in that uh, it's basically the same language, except um, it notes that... It, uh, Actually, Actually, I'll just read it. So, so it, it says, no person shall smoke or hold or possess any lighted cigar, cigarette, pipe, or device containing tobacco or tobacco product, where a tobacco substitute within or upon any park, field, or recreational area owned by the city, which is conspicuously posted with signage prohibiting smoking. And the area that concerns me about this is it, it sort of reads like if it's not, if there's not signage, then smoke away. And you know, you know, and if the, the intent, intent was for there to be a smoking ban, then I think it should just be an outright ban and, and not have this sort of confusing language at the end. end. And, and so there is language in, in the code. Um, you know, I, I don't know if the intent is that smoking be banned, period, in parks and fields, or if it really does pertain only to areas where there's signage. Um, but we, we wanted to build on that and just say uh, no smoking. So there's language in code. If, if you chose to not, not accept, accept uh, what, what we propose. I don't think it would be the end, end of the world. Um, but, but, you know, we, we thought, thought that we should, should just make it clear. clear. I, I, I actually like, like your, your new language, language and expansion. expansion. I just wanted, wanted to mention that it, it, it had existed, existed previously. previously. Thank, Thank you. For the the clarification, clarification, Dan. Dan. Um, uh, go, go ahead, Dan. Dan. Sure. I, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll agree with Donna on the, the smoking issue, but I, I don't have much, much to add. I would, my preference would be to pull out some of the language about the firearms uh, to the extent that we can't enforce it, only because I think it invites a challenge to have that non-enforceable language in. Um, and I had one question, I had two questions. One, um, how do we define dusk and dawn? Um, if, if those, those are the, the, the new alternates, alternates and, and I, I presume we're not looking to, you know, please somebody who gets there five minutes before, before but it does, does strike me that both terms are somewhat more nebulous than the very fixed hours that are in existence now. Um, could, could you do sunset and sunrise? Those are theoretically definable points. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I think those, those might be slightly, slightly more, more fixed points, points but, I, but I, you know, know, I'm also not, not, opposed, I'm not opposed to that, that idea. idea. I just think that those are difficult to pin down. down. You, know, you know, it's that, that, that uh, you know, one, one man's, man's dusk is another man's uh, nighttime. nighttime. Um, I, I, I just, just wonder if, 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 if and, and I, I don't mean to hold it up on this, but it does seem like something that could be fought over. If the purpose is to sort of keep people out from more broad times, which is, you know, somebody's there at midnight or if somebody's there, you know, at, at 1 a.m. Um, but it does, it does strike me that if we could have 
sunrise, sunrise or sunset, sunset might, might be a slightly, slightly more, more, more assignable, assignable time because those, those are, as, as, as somebody pointed out, out those, those are times that are actually set, set by a clock. Well, well, and actually, um, I, I just, just want, want to point out that, that the language as it is right, right now says, um, uh, not, um, <laughs> not between, between the hours of 9 p.m. or dusk each day, whichever, whichever is later, and 9 p.m. will always be later because the um, the latest the day goes as the equinox, not the equinox, the solstice in June, and the um, the solstice is uh, the sunset is 838. Um, so that's, yeah, I mean, either it's dusk, which is nebulous, or it's sunset, which is 838. Um, and yeah, anyway, I don't know. I haven't looked up the, uh, the sunrise yet. Um, but, uh, anyway, a little, it's a little, it's a little um, yeah, yeah. Is, is there anything, anything further on that, Dan? And then, then Jack, and well, then I just, well, I just, I guess I'd ask Alec or, 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 or Bill, Bill if this is an issue that, that, that you guys have, are, are wishing, wishing to address, address or having that little, little flexibility, flexibility, you know, that, 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 that someone would be there at twilight after, uh, after, after the, the sun goes, goes down, down is, is, is okay. Um, and that's, that's what you're encouraging. Dan and Alec from the parks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not, not an issue for it to be vague, vague in my mind. Okay. okay. I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. that. Sorry, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Dan. Dan. Were... Um, you know, you the know, only thing I think, I think broadly, broadly as, as far as it occurred, occurred to you, the, the, the big concern for me was, you know, if people are in the parks, when, when it's dark, dark it, it makes, makes it more, more difficult. difficult. If, if there's, there's an accident, it makes, makes it more, more difficult, difficult for someone to get to that individual. Um, so, so that's, that's the idea, idea I, guess, I guess, behind the curfew. And then, you know, the, the, the dusk and dawn thing, thing was an addition sort of late in the game. That was just with the intent to, you know, during, during the summer when the days are generally longer to give people more time to access the parks. Um, you know, we didn't really have a great way of of sort of broadening the 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, without saying, you know, except during the summer, it might be 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. But so we were trying to simplify it without being, too, I don't know, without being unclear. Um, I, I wouldn't be heartbroken if, if this was removed to sort of move this along. I, you know, I know it's late and you guys don't want to be talking about this any longer. Um, but that was, that was the intent. It was just during the summer to give people a little more time. Yeah. yeah, and, and, and I'm perfectly really fine with that ambiguity, um, as, as long, long as you're com you guys, guys are comfortable with it. I don't, I don't, I don't have an issue. Um, and then yeah. I'll, I had another uh, small, small question, but I'm just going to wave it off so we can move on. Uh, Jack and Donna. I'll just point out that uh, although the drafters may not have been aware of this, Dawn and dusk and twilight actually do have defined defined meanings. Uh, civil dawn, civil twilight occurs when the sun is less than six degrees below the horizon. In the morning, civil twilight begins when the sun is six degrees below the horizon and ends at sunrise. In the evening, it begins at sunset and ends when the sun is reaches six degrees below the horizon. Civil dawn is the moment when the, the geometric, geometric center, center of the sun is six degrees below the horizon in the morning. Civil dusk is the moment when the geometric sun at the center of the sun is six degrees below the horizon in the evening. So for any given date, one could actually look up the time of civil twilight, civil dawn or civil dusk. Um, I don't know if that people are not as familiar with those terms, of course, is just sunrise and sunset, but... Uh, I don't, I don't really, really think, think they're ambiguous. I'd be happy if there was a cross-reference added to uh, the language to whatever resource you just read from. <laughs> okay. And then uh, his budget will have an observatory to be measuring the degrees of sun. Right? Awesome. Um, before you go, Donna, I just want to note that I, I feel like I'm 
hearing uh, a number, number of potential, potential things to be cleaned up about this, and I think we're going to need to make a decision as to whether we want to approve this now and then, and then talk, talk about further revisions, revisions uh, or uh, have, have a third, third reading, reading potentially. Uh, or, or or not at all. Not, not worry about, about it, just move forward. forward. Uh, Donna. Donna. I was, was going to propose we have a third reading, reading and, and that, that we get language from Lauren, language from, from this, and some other things to tidy it up before we pass it. Second. Um, as long as we're in the, that mode, I just had noted that in section 13.319, it still includes um, Jack's name and Dan's name. Um, for, for edit science, science we remove those. Um, unless, unless you want to be forever, forever memorialized. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I, I was hoping to get, get into the ordinance. The ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lauren, go ahead. It's just two, two other really, really minor, minor things. things. In, in 13.318, there's um, an unnecessary, unnecessary apostrophe in trees, parks and trees. Staff or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The other one that was like slightly more substantive, though, it was it, it, like, like there's still a specific, specific in 13305, like a specific date and or day of the week and time for meeting. And I, I thought we had that. We would just say like they'll meet monthly or something. Like we don't need to put that in. Uh, yeah, we're getting rid of that. Okay, so just just flagging that that's still in there. Yeah. Uh, we agreed to just make it more flexible for them. Good call. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so I think we made a, a motion for a third reading. reading. I did because, because I feel, feel like, like there's a lot, lot of edits, edits we need to send, send into our staff, staff and get it cleaned up. Uh, and, and I think, I think it, was it was seconded. seconded. Yep. By me. Jacket. Jacket. Okay. Uh, any, any further discussion? Okay. okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, okay. And um, fair enough. So, so we'll have some more language there. there. I, I think it being, being 10 o'clock, we are going to put off the five home part way discussion yet again. I apologize. Uh, I but, that's, so, so I can, I can quickly, quickly report well, that great. Um, in the anticipation of this meeting, I, I did uh, receive communication from uh, Karen, Karen Freeman, Freeman of Vermont. Uh, Housing, housing and conservation board, board. and um you know, you know we were actually hoping we could get all the stakeholders together before tonight's, tonight's meeting. meeting uh this, this was, was yesterday, yesterday but we have a meeting next tuesday with the mortgage, mortgage holder the connors uh, uh you know everyone, everyone the, the preservation, preservation trust. trust so it may, it may be just, just as well, well to um have that conversation and then bring back, back those results to the council and not, not have us take a position, position yet. yet. Great. So, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, yeah. I, 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 I talked, talked to, to Jeremy, uh, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie Renner. Renner. I, I, I was, was going to say, I talked to Jamie Renner, Renner the, the uh, uh, Attorney General's, General's Office bill. You, you may want to loop him in on that. He's, he's, he's part, part of the Attorney General's, General's Office for the nonprofits, and he was already aware of the situation. And uh, suggested that the AG wanted to be a part of any sort of global conversation. Hey, what's the last name? Uh, Jer uh, Jamie Renner. It's R-E-N-N-E-R. -E -E I can send you his contact information. Okay. Super. Okay. Um, great. So moving on. Um, council, council reports. I'm going to go in the Order, order that we, we would have gone, gone. And so Donna, where were we in person? Well, I want to start off with I really want breaks. breaks. It's, it's not, not only my bladder, bladder, but I need to get up and walk sitting so long in this chair, which is not nearly as comfortable as my council chamber chair. So, so please put breaks, breaks in no, no matter what. what. Yeah, <laughs> my apologies, we even forgot, forgot the break that, that we were going to do. do. I know, I know. But And also just... I went, I went by Capitol Plaza, Plaza the other day, day and there was the whole Beshear family out putting out their carpet, putting the flowers out. It's looking, looking good. So, so thank, thank you all, all for supporting that. that. Great. Um, super. Uh, Connor. No, I, I hope that I had it together. We both got an email out there, but um, 
the Chalk, chalk Artists, Artists Project. People, people are looking for spaces for some chalk, chalk drawings in town. Uh, which looks like a really, really cool project. I think, I think uh, there's, there's probably, is there some other web page about it? We should probably get it up, but uh, Sarah Bergé is leading the charge on that. So that would be cool, too. too. Brighten up, up our town, town in some dark days, days here. here. So that, that, that's it for me. Thanks. Uh, Jay. Yep, just, just a reminder to, to for everyone that Saturday is uh, new, new day, day for Green Up Day, up day. Um, and so, so get, get out if you can. can. Um, and, and thanks uh, from, from uh, my people live and Nate Houseman for making it happen, and, and also to uh, the folks at Public Works for being flexible and uh, uh, supporting that, that effort uh, despite the delay. Thanks. Thanks. Great, uh, Dan. Yeah, I, I had a couple of feedback from constituents uh, about some some, some noise. noise. Apparently, there was a motorcycle incident um, where they, they were revving up their engines, and so um, obviously this is something that the single incident is not going to be able to be policed. But I think we have to we have to be aware, especially with people having been cooped up and they may not have. Um, areas to go that we're probably going to see a rise of uh, complaints between neighbors or people coming through neighborhoods um, as everybody sort of gets out of their winter hibernation. Motorcycle noise, however, is a hardy perennial in the spring complaint. Or hardy annual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Jack. I'll pass. Lauren. Um, only thing I was hoping to uh, throw out there was I would love to maybe at one of the upcoming meetings um, get an update from John on what's happening with our John Odom with our elections, knowing that they're looking different this year. There's a lot of conversations. John did a great job on. Uh, BPR uh, talking, talking about some of the issues and how Montpelier um, is addressing it. So just, just something would be great to have all of us kind of better understand what that's going to look like and if we're going to need, you know, what, what accommodations at the city and looking for volunteers and maybe different ages and stuff. But um, nice, nice job, John, on that and look, look forward to talking more. And then that's it for me. Great. And, and I, I assume, assume since John, John turned, turned off his video, there is nothing, nothing to say about, about that right now. Um, so well, I can talk to you on. Don't be very lucid. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. And then I also, John, John, is it fair to say that this is a topic, topic worth discussing um, at, at a future meeting? meeting? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's there's, there's what, what the state's, state's going to do. That's already, already sort of a plan underway. We'll see how it shakes out. It looks like the legislature, legislature is, is taking control of the reins on that. But there's also some that we might do separately. So um, it's probably worth talking about. Great. So we'll, we'll put, put that, that on future, future agenda, agenda item. Mm -hmm. um, for, for myself, I just want to let people know that uh, we. Uh, with, with the Energy, Energy Information, Information Ordinance Group, uh, have found, found a grant that was pretty large, and we're, we're hoping to have the application ready to go uh, for um, tomorrow, actually. Um, but uh, with that in mind, this is something that potentially um, could be broad enough that we could be looking at um, funding of even like, like a position, yeah, yeah, even, even that could potentially help with. Uh, Energy, energy planning, planning for, for the city. city. So um, we're going to try to um, work, work that into the into, into the grant for tomorrow. I just want you to be all aware of that, and hopefully um, there's, there's no objections. objections. Um, if, if you do have, have objections, let me know. know. Um, but, but we're, we're going to work to get, to get that, that out the door tomorrow, um, and, and then we'll see. So, so any any, any comments, comments on that? No. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Um, and, and it is also, I should, I should say, say to, to, to support um, potential implementation of any um, uh, energy, energy information ordinance. ordinance. So um, that's, that's, that's also very much a, a part of it. So, um, all right. Uh, anything from John? I got nothing. Okay. okay. 
Uh, Bill. Uh, the only thing I have a um, quick executive, executive session, session is uh, also, also thank, thank DBW and Fire, Fire Chief for getting, getting the banners up with the high school seniors on. It's great. It's, it's wonderful to be able to honor the class of 2020. And uh, I, I, I had, had reason to go through, through several towns over the, the weekend, weekend to see how they honored their graduates, graduates and there were many different ways, but none is None of the full banners through downtown. downtown so. so this is definitely the most impressive. Yeah. Uh, great. great. Um, all right. So, so that, that concludes our regular, regular business. business and, and we do have an executive session um, on the agenda. Um, Bill, I still I assume you would still like to do that. Yeah. And Cameron, yeah. you join us, right? Okay. Uh, Jack. Jack. Pursuant to 1 BSA section 313A3, I move that we go into executive session to discuss uh, uh, the employment or appointment of a public officer or employee. Uh, there will be no action coming out of it. I'll second it. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Rose? Lauren, Lauren, did you have a question? Does this, are, are we clear, clear that we're adjourning the public meeting? meeting? Did they do that? Yes, there will be no. Great. Okay. okay. So then we'll, we'll hop, hop off this call and get, get on to the executive, executive session call. call. See you sure. sure. And for everyone else at the public on the call, I'm going to close this for everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks.